Alderman Wilson? Here. Alderman Holmes? Here. Alderman Tendum? Here. Alderman Grover? Here. Alderman Rainey? Here. Alderman Burris? Here. Alderman Fisk? Here. Alderman Braithwaite? Here. Alderman Wynn? We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Saturday, October 29th, 2011 meeting of the Evanston City Council. Uh, first on the agenda is citizen comment. Um, you, e you each have three minutes. I'm going to call up the first four speakers, Ephraim Barakal, Seth Green, Tom Fischel, and Junad Risky. Either take your pick. Good morning. My name is Ephraim Barakal. I'm a technical support specialist for the city, and I'm here to speak about the proposal about the proposed elimination of my position. Eliminating my position will have several negative impacts for the city. Standard ratio for user to tech support is 125 to 1. If this position is eliminated, the ratio at the city will be closer to 400 to 1. That's an unreasonable workload for the remaining two techs we are already fully taxed. Disruption of library systems will adversely affect services that the library provides to its patrons, especially if this position is eliminated, as I have a unique knowledge of the systems used at the library. I am the only technical support specialist that supports the phone system, which includes troubleshooting issues with office phones, smartphones, circuits used by burglar and fire alarms, and elevators, to name a few. Longer wait times for user and resolution of critical issues will result in poor customer support or customer services to Evanston residents. A loss of knowledge that cannot be replaced. Loss of staff will worsen morale that is already low within IT and within the organization. And loss of cultural diversity within IT and the organization. As specialists, I currently respond to approximately 40% of the service requests assigned to the techs. I serve as the primary specialist for the city's telecommunications system and as the primary specialist for the library. I have implemented a self-service reservation and printing system at the library and developed a model for deploying public use computers throughout the city. I am the only specialist currently involved in the VoIP migration project. <coughs> Excuse me. How does the city propose to fill this gap? I propose the following budget neutral solution that will allow me to retain my job. Since the IT division managers plan to retire in early 2012, I propose the balance of his salary for the year be used to fund my position. The proposal will not change the total amount of monies reflected in the proposed 2012 budget for IT. If management does not believe that this is possible, then I respectfully request that management explore other savings in other areas of IT that are not taxed to the level of this position. The skills and abilities that I contribute are unique and cannot be done by the remaining two techs. Maintaining skilled and diverse employees should be a goal of the city. I respectfully ask that the city and the members of the city council reconsider not eliminating this position. Thank you. If you want, you have more than three minutes because it's a public hearing. Uh, I try to condense that memo down to three minutes. Oh, you're um, the best. Thank you. <laughs> but my, the, the memo that I did distribute goes into more details, and it also, there's also an additional proposal on that memo. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. My name is Seth Green, uh, and I just wanted to briefly speak on behalf of YOU, our youth, our board, and our staff to say uh, that we appreciate the amount of support in the current budget for Human Services and the Mental Health Board. Uh, we hope that in this process that goes forward, that level of support is maintained. Uh, three brief reasons. One is that with all of the state cuts uh, and the increased demand for our services, 
Many of us are at a breaking point. Uh, many of us budget thinking that that will maintain. Assuming it does, uh, we don't have to make any changes uh, at a time when we're already trying to expand to meet the need. Uh, secondly, there really is a wonderful ecosystem here in Evanston. Uh, we have after-school programs for youth. If they need legal services, we send them to the Moran Center. If they need jobs, we send them to the Youth Job Center. Uh, so many other groups, homelessness, connections to the homeless. Uh, so much of that ecosystem is supported by having the connective tissue of the city as a common funder, as a convener, having an application every year that asks us how we work together. So maintaining that support, while it's a small piece of our overall funding, makes a tremendous difference in how this city works together. Uh, the final thing I'll just say briefly is that it also allows us to bring in a lot more resources for Evanston. Uh, I've worked since I came here on three successful federal grant applications. In each one of those, uh, what we said was that we have a lot of these foundational costs paid for. All of your money will go directly into programs, and we didn't take any of that for anything else other than direct services. It made us a hugely more competitive uh, applicant. Uh, all of that then allows Evanston to get more resources. So for every you know, dollar that the city puts in, we're bringing in about $13 from outside of Evanston. Uh, and that makes a huge difference in terms of the overall services available to our youth. So I know there's a lot of competing priorities, uh, many of them uh, tug. I just want to express um, our hope that the level of mental health and uh, human services is maintained over this budget process. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Mayor, City Council, staff, and residents and citizens of Evanston. My name is Tom Fischel, and I live at 1415 Leonard Place. Um, I'm not going to read my note I have here today. You've seen my emails. You've seen my positions and my feelings about what's gone on in Evanston. And uh, though I'd like to speak out for the uh, small independent businesses that were thrown under the bus some time ago to make way for the big box chain stores that never came, today we're looking at our first responders who are in peril. Their pensions are being somewhere between $300 and $400 million unfunded. And many of these police officers protected my store, protected me. Firemen who took me to the hospital when uh, my life was, you know, I was about to die. And to see their pensions unfunded is just, is very difficult for me. That I've known some of these guys since high school. These guys have come into my store and um, it doesn't make sense. And I think there are more answers than just, you know, bad numbers crunchings. I think there's a lot more to the story. And to, uh, you know, my friends were first responders, you know, this is unacceptable. And you guys, if as God is my witness, you will not be thrown under the bus. And your pensions will be funded. You can sit there and put your life at risk every day and know when you turn 70 that there's going to be something there for you. And I don't know how you do it. I don't, I don't know what magic trick we can do. But we've got to get serious about this, folks. And we can't keep kicking the can down the road. It's bad. And I apologize for not coming here 10 years ago and trying to warn the, you know, the warning bell. But I'm not a good public speaker. You know, I'd rather sell jockstraps for a living than get involved in politics. But... Um, you know, we, we've, got a, we've got some difficult days ahead of us, and I hope we can take care of our first responders who take care of us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. An eight, Janad Risky, an 8% property tax increase as proposed by staff and the city council and mayor is not acceptable. Let's not play any politics here today. The mayor and the council have, have clearly supported this 8% tax increase. Um, Wally once stated he solved the structural problems of the budget. I don't really think that's happened if we're ready to have an 8% tax increase. The other problem that I find a more concern than this 8% tax increase is in future years, with the projections being stated, we're going probably going to go to 10 to 15 percent in the year after. There really are no magic bullets to solve the city's problems. The city's problems have been created through numerous mistakes, screw-ups, and spending on unnecessary things here. At every meeting I go to, and it seems to be we're spending money frivolously, at, I was at the last Economic Development Committee meeting a few days ago. Staff was proposing spending $50,000 on a study for arts. It's ridiculous that we, that we have these kind of proposals on the table. And I, meeting after meeting, we have proposals that have little value to operate the city. 
to hire a consultant. And it, the, the Robert Crown study makes no sense either. That was another great item that staff should have done their homework. We should have seen some numbers before we spent $150,000 to hire a consultant to do a study. If we, don't, if we have all this economic development staff, why can't this staff do anything to pr produce some very rough numbers to prove feasibility? These people can't do that. You better find new people or don't even have them. Because, I mean, frankly, this is not acceptable. The study you did on Oakton not too long ago, this was back less than a month or two, it was very poorly presented. The options didn't make any sense. Nobody really showed numbers again. And I can't, I can't understand if staff can't produce numbers for this stuff, we have to hire consultants. We have a problem here. I mean, this is just not acceptable. Um, these, this, um, I, I think there's other issues here, too, with staff. As we all know, staff wasted money on this whole yard waste sticker and basically the group contract and all the problems created with that put the city in a hole well over a million dollars. This is not acceptable either. These kind of things appear unacceptable, that we can't run the city and we can't do things and, and project correct types of operations here. This is just not acceptable either. This puts us in a further deeper and deeper hole. Um, I think um, the answers here are not more, as, as some of you think, uh, that we're seeing in government everywhere. They want to increase fees and fines on the public. I think it was well summarized by one of the aldermen at a meeting ago that that's unacceptable to prey on people here. Um, I think the city also better realize poverty in this town, at least it was, it was shown in Evanston now recently, has gone from 11 percent poverty rate to a 17 percent poverty rate. Uh, but we have people here that seem to think we, we, we create more taxes for more poverty. So I mean, frankly, we have more taxes, more programs. I think the answer, the city recently wanted to, not so long ago, it got killed though because you didn't get a grant, you wanted to put a health center in the basement here. Totally infeasible. City didn't have the money, the grant didn't even add up to the money. Half a million dollars wasn't going to fund redoing the entire basement of a facility that doesn't work. It probably would have taken over two million dollars. And that grant was supposed to be over three years. It's ridiculous. This kind of wasting money has to stop here. I mean, you people need to figure out how to do things before you start spending our money. And that's really a real problem here. Um, I think um, the real answer is making staff and Mr. Bobkowitz accountable, really, to do their homework and get things done. Because frankly, as I see it, you're basically going to um, make taxes very un unaffordable for people soon. Um, the other thing is, I'm, I'm not, I'm having, have, I don't have an opinion on privatization per se, but I think there, there are some issues here. Basically, privatization, in my mind, is when the city of Chicago sells its parking meters to somebody and, and basically they create a huge profit. That's privatization. The issue is, um, that's ridiculous here, when I saw the city wanting to get rid of crossing guards, $8 an hour employees aren't going to fix my tax problem to privatize that unless you have a real problem how you operate it. The problem really is how the city's operating that, not really in getting rid of the $8 an hour employees. It doesn't make any sense. So that's one issue. I mean, yes, the city it privatizes in many ways because you are contractors to do certain work and things. So that, not all city employees do all jobs here. That's not the issue. But frankly, it's how you do these things. And I think the city council, and this is really up to Wally to decide, but going after $8 an hour jobs with no benefits doesn't fix anything. So it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just a waste of time and money. And, and the numbers being projected are not realistic. And finally, you know, I think um, there's a lot of issues I know with employees, but I, I do want to remind the council that you can't make things so bad that you're going to hurt employees. And, I, you know, I've stated this before with the lagoon issue that, I mean, frankly, the city better not be sending anyone down in that, that lagoon pit it, there without really, that has to stop. The city needs to fix that problem. I mean, it's a serious issue if somebody gets hurt. And city council members and the city manager would hold liability for that, not just let legal, not dollar liability, but possibly criminal liability, because it's a well-known fact it's dangerous to go down in that pit. So I would, I would really suggest you start to think about some of these things and what you're doing. Because frankly, um, things are going to get, I think, are going to get worse with the economy, and it's, and it's going to get very difficult around here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Jim Mizell, Wendy Pollack, Mike Vasilko, and Henry Bayer.
And would you please give your name and address? Jim Eisel, 1000 Grove. I'm a uh, volunteer uh, producer at the Evanston Community Media Center, and uh, I'm not uh, speaking here as an advocate uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I just want to relay some facts. Uh, very quickly, I got involved with uh, ECTV four years ago uh, for four reasons, essentially. One was uh, community service. Um, I had been on the board of... Uh, uh, WBEZ in Chicago, the NPR affiliate, when it was divested from the Chicago Board of Education. So I had some uh, perspective and interest on public media. And um, during my career in the investment industry, I covered the communications industry. So I was um, uh, pretty certain that there would be some changes coming to uh, local, communication, uh, local uh, community TV. Um, at that point, four years ago, I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to happen. This is way before the arrival of uh, our good friend Wally Bobkowitz. Um, I sat through the hearings uh, two years ago um, when it was divulged about the uh, operating reserves that ECTV had, which at that time were about $150,000. And um, it, shortly after that, about a few months after that, I, I went to an annual meeting um, at ECTV. That was uh, July of uh, uh, 2009 where an annual budget had been uh, passed, uh, which was basically to deplete all of those reserves to the tune of $7,500 a month negative um, over and above the funds being received from the city. Um, I petitioned uh, the board of ECTV uh, uh, as to why that was happening. Uh, the treasurer resigned, um, and I uh, uh, petitioned that a new treasurer uh, come in. Subsequently, I joined the finance committee and um, found that uh, ECV, ECTV was operating uh, 74 hours a week. There is no, there is no community uh, access center in the country that's operating uh, uh, to, with those hours. Uh, the deficit essentially was going to salaries. Uh, it's now at the point where there are, there's virtually no reserves left. I bring this up to you. Again, I want to tell you that I'm a neutral party. I'm not an advocate. Um, in one way or the other, but I want to give you some food for thought because I know there will be a tidy package that will be presented to you that will include the uh, new franchise agreement and some changes that are being proposed for uh, ECTV going forward. Um, let me say in closing that I, that I think the most important thing that should be discussed here is a new governance structure for community television in this community which should include oversight of the franchise agreement. I remember watching Ann Rainey ask um, Mr. Bob Kowitz uh, several weeks ago about why in a community like this there wasn't greater community participation in the letting of the franchise. I think there's a, real, a really large governance issue here. I hope to come back and provide you with some other facts that you can process as you take a look at the competing interests for the future of ECTV. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, I'm Wendy Pollock. I live at 1410 Oak Avenue. Um, I just wanted to speak very simply about the uh, impact I think that the proposed cuts would uh, have on quality of life here and to add my voice to those opposing the outsourcing of um, vital public service sector jobs. Um, specifically, the Department of Forestry um, is a, a concern. Um, I think you've all seen the memos that have been prepared over the last week about um, the impact that the proposed cuts would have on the ability of that department to respond to citizen requests, to even to public safety issues, even to uh, snow removal in the winter. Um, I saw that the city just won a, an award from the governor for its sustainability efforts, and um, I think that's a wonderful and an important part of living here in Evanston is the city's commitment to environmental issues and uh, sustainability, but trees are a huge part of that. They, they look beautiful, they increase our property values here, um, but they're, they do a lot more than that, um, and uh, that people often don't realize. They help clean the air, they clean the water, they slow stormwater runoff, re relieve some of the pressure on uh, sewage systems. 
um, and they sequester CO2. Um, they, they have to be taken care of if they're going to um, live and provide all those services. There's even evidence that they uh, are associated with lower crime rates, with better business, and with better health outcomes. There's a lot of evidence to that um, effect now. So I, I really, uh, others can speak more about exactly uh, what impact um, these, these cuts would have on the department. It's inconceivable that they could operate without a secretary to answer the call when a citizen calls and there's a a uh, tree that pre presents a public safety hazard, for example, um, I, I don't know how they could do it. Um, I would just mention, too, some of you may have seen Charles Blow's op-ed piece in the New York Times this morning. If you haven't, I would recommend it. He shows that compared to many other countries, this, this country is near the bottom in public services, including health and, and many other vital functions. And I think that we have to start at the local level, right, at places like Evanston, to start turning that around. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Fasolko, 2728 Reese Avenue, Evanston. Um, I'm here to advocate a real economic development plan that includes support of local businesses as well as a genuine focus on new big ideas for sources of tax revenue that prevents the need uh, to raise property taxes and prevents the perceived need to lay off city workers. Uh, I do not believe there is a good reason right now to add city staff to the Economic Development Department, especially at the fate of dismissing public workers. Uh, we need a citywide economic development plan. The economic development plan should be more than just handing out uh, obscene amounts of money at the Economic Development Committee uh, to any business uh, that we can lure to Evanston. There are ways to create an Evanston that would naturally draw the businesses we need. Some of you know I was recently uh, gone through a process uh, for a proposal I had been advocating for some time uh, for lakefront development. Uh, one of the people in the committee who I who kind of raised an issue that I kept pondering uh, throughout the process, his name was Percy Berger, and um, I believe he's a banker in town. Anyway, he... Uh, his, his thought was he saw a lot of promise to the plan, uh, as he admitted, but um, he also wanted to compare it. He wanted to see how it fit into the big picture economic development plan of Evanston. He wanted to compare it to other big ideas. Uh, when he raised that concern, uh, I mean, no one in the room could address his comment because we don't have a plan to compare it to. Um, and there are no other big ideas out there that I've seen or he has seen uh, that he could compare this proposal to. So the, the, the concept of creating an economic development plan that we can work towards, I think, is needed. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Berger's comments in that regard. Uh, lastly, uh, this last council meeting where the actuary spoke uh, regarding the pension plan, I, I personally saw his comments as very entertaining, uh, but I took uh, I took away from that as a citizen that he took the issue of pension, uh, pension paying into the pension and, and getting it under control way too lightly. Um, it seems to me he just supports, like many do, uh, kicking the can down the road, which I am vehemently against. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Henry Bayer. I am the uh, executive director of AFSCME Council 31, which is a collective bargaining representative for uh, many of the employees uh, who work for the city. And I'm here this morning uh, to testify uh, against uh, their proposal to privatize the jobs in the, in the forestry, parks and forestry department. Uh, as I understand it, uh, there's a plan to eliminate uh, six positions uh, and to privatize that work. Uh, but according to the city's own report, uh, there are 38 uh, functions that are currently performed uh, by the employees in the department, which would no longer be performed by the contractor, which would, of course, uh, result in a diminution of services, which was uh, uh, talked about uh, earlier, so I won't, I won't go through all of that. In addition, there's an administrative post that's being eliminated, um, 67 functions that the person who's in that post performs that somehow 
uh, the city expects to get done by, by other people who are already overburdened with all the duties uh, that they have. Uh, there's also an issue beyond uh, the effect it would have on parks and forestry directly uh, is that the people in parks and forestry are cross-trained. Uh, they're utilized in the wintertime to help with snow clearance. Uh, if you have read uh, newspaper reports recently, uh, we are expecting the worst winter we've had in decades, more snow, uh, worse weather than we've had. Uh, we're obviously going to need more, not less, uh, snow clearance, yet uh, this plan, if it were to go forward, would result uh, in, the, in the city not having the ability to keep the streets clean. And although I no longer live in Evanston, I remember living here, I did live here in 1979 when we had the great snowstorms back then, and I know how important it is uh, that we get the streets clean. Uh, I think it's also important to note that uh, to the extent you've had citizen input, the citizens of this city, and I, and I hope and I'm sure that the, the council was responsive to that, uh, had privatizing services way down on their list of, of ways to deal with the budget. As I understand it, they had a minus seven vote tally on Engage Evanston. So if you're listening to your constituents, and I'm sure you are, uh, this is not the direction in which people who've indicated a preference want to go. There are ways to generate revenue. Uh, many of those ideas have been put forward, and certainly uh, we think those would be preferable to privatizing the jobs that you're talking about privatizing. And I might add, because I don't think uh, you can ignore the human dimension, to lay off people in this economy, people who are providing a vital service, is something that this council should not do and should think long and hard about it. If they, were, if they weren't providing a service or weren't providing a, an important service, uh, you might say, well, look, we don't, can't, don't have the luxury of keeping these people around. But that's not the case. They provide vital services. They have served this community well. They, hate, they help make this community what it is. Uh, and it's not as though you don't have the financial wherewithal to keep these people working. And I hope that you would give this long, hard thought before you think about the devastation that would be wreaked upon these families if these layoffs were to occur. I would hope you would reject this plan because it's a bad plan. It's bad for the employees who perform the service. It's bad for the people who live in this town. And it's bad for the general direction that this country is going in, which is to drive down the wages of middle class people, to drive people out of the middle class, which is what you would be doing by privatizing these jobs. So I would hope, I would hope that you would reject this notion quickly and, and remove the cloud of uncertainty that hangs over the heads of the people uh, whose jobs are in jeopardy. And I hope you would decide today that you are not, and make it clear today, that you're not going to privatize the jobs, you're not going to throw these people out on the street, and you're going to continue Evanston's proud tradition of quality public services. Thank you. Thank you, and the last speaker to be signed up is Kathy White. Good morning. I'm Kathy White, Parking System Supervisor for the City of Evanston. I'm a born and raised Evanstonian and has been a loyal and dedicated employee of the City of Evanston for 24 years. I have recently been told that my job is recommended for elimination I find because of budget cuts. I find that hard to believe since I work, I get paid out of the parking fund, which is stable. Um, I am here today to get a better understanding of why it is necessary to eliminate my position. Is the position being eliminated or is it me? Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes citizen comment. Uh, next is discussion and consideration of the 2012 budget. Madam Mayor, members of the council, good morning. Uh, we only have one presentation for you this morning and then are prepared to answer questions, take questions, um, and that is to discuss the capital improvement program. Uh, Mr. Lyons is here and, and has a presentation and I'll turn it over to him.
Good morning, Madam Mayor, members of council, Clerk Altwell, Mr. Bobquitz. Uh, we'll go through our, we have a, a, a capital presentation that's going to talk a little bit about um, projects that are going to be carried over, new capital projects, debt service, and then uh, a, a brief summary of our upcoming schedule. So I uh, don't need to go through that. Uh, so when we talk about carryover projects, these are projects that were budgeted in a previous year, and we are requesting that you reauthorize funding. Each year we should always have an authorization of funding for the work that is still planned to be done within the given year. So this is a summary, and I will go straight to the detail. So um, the Economic Development Fund, uh, uh, almost a year and a half to two years ago, uh, committed uh, $50,000 regarding land purchase for the Grandmother Park uh, initiative. The Sherman Avenue Public Art is uh, um, downtown art. That's budgeted $81,000. And by the way, if you have questions regarding any of the detail on these projects, we do have all of the directors associated with the projects here, that, and they can respond on any detail that uh, you might have questions on. So then we get to the, the longer list, and this has to do with our infrastructure and our um, uh, facilities lists. And I won't go through them in detail, just to, to point out that uh, when we do have carryover projects, uh, many times it's related to um, uh, weather. It can also be related to other competing needs. What, you're sh what we show up here is, is that, uh, in this case, the funding source says CIP fund reserves, but uh, in this case, all of these projects would be funded by a previous bond issue. So while it is CIP fund reserves shown there, it is actually from 2009, 2010, or 2011 um, bond issues. Mr. Lyons, could someone tell me why fixing the Ecology Center greenhouse is a priority? Uh, why it's a carryover? Why why is it necessary to do this? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, Clerk Green, um, and Mr. City Manager, uh, this project uh, was approved previously um, for some funding from the city, but there was a grant that was applied for. Uh, which we did not receive, and we received that information about two and a half weeks ago. The actual greenhouse at the Ecology Center uh, is in extreme disrepair. It leaks, and it is a, a facility that needs to at least be repaired. And so it was a priority in order to, uh, because it is the east wall, so to speak, of the Ecology Center, it needs to be uh, repaired and, and fixed so that it no longer leaks both uh, for utilities uh, as well as uh, uh, water leaks. Thank you. Alderman Burris? Um, Mayor Tistel, I think I'm remembering similarly to you about the greenhouse. I thought that we took the greenhouse off the capital improvement list when we were talking about the fog houses. I want to say this was back in maybe the spring when we were talking about capital improvement, that we weren't going to redo the greenhouse. But could someone refresh my memory on that and... and Maybe go back and look at the minutes. Uh, Madam Mayor, Alderman Burris, uh, as Mr. Gainer had mentioned, I think when we last spoke of this, we were still awaiting uh, word from the state on a grant funding. So uh, we've now heard that we have not received the grant funding. We're proposing that we would leave the money in the budget and come back to you with a repairs project. I think the discussion that was held a few months ago was about projects that were in process, and we said that we weren't spending the money until we heard from the state. So now we have heard from the state, so we will come back to you uh, with a proposal. If the council does not wish to move forward with repairs, then I think we need to look at uh, taking down the greenhouse and then uh, looking at what it would take to put a wall on the building. Um, again, we've just heard uh, from the state that the grant's not coming, so we're not prepared this morning uh, to talk to you about what we think the repairs will be. But uh, absent the repairs, then I think the next step would be to remove the greenhouse and then uh, look at what it would take to build a wall uh, to close off that section of the building. So we just, again, in the, with the budget and all that, we've not, we're not prepared to talk about an alternate plan now that the grant has not come in, uh, but we will come back to you likely right after the first of the year with some proposals. So in the meantime, we think it's important to leave money in the budget to deal with the issue. Alderman Burris? Um, and it, 
with that one as well as the grandmother park and any of these others and i don't know for sure which ones that have a matching component or there's a contingency so the the fifty thousand for the grandmother park has to is contingent on uh those people getting funding, funding. Right. so that is not clear nor was this under the the ecology greenhouse about the matching so where it's in reserve, I think maybe an asterisk or something to explain that we're waiting on X, and if X doesn't happen, then we don't spend that money. That, I think that helps us also look at where we can take um, other, take money and move it to somewhere else um, in more high priority projects. Just for information purposes, I think that would be extremely helpful. Uh, and Alderman Burris, members of the council, we have provided uh, a document that sort of had an update, and I think the last time we did that was probably about two months ago. Right. So we can republish that uh, well, list. I, I think for the yeah. purposes today, we were just trying to give you an overview, but certainly we have more detail, and we can provide Mr. Lyons, Mr. Dieter, uh, we can provide the updated uh, capital project uh, uh, status report, and uh, on that report, we'll make sure it's clearly delineated those projects that are awaiting uh, other other funding. I'm looking just quickly up at Thank the you. list to see um, um, what else fits into that category, um, and I'm not immediately identifying any. So let me let me provide that report, a revision of the report we've previously provided, and uh, we'll be able you'll be able to have that information. If integrated in, in this one instead of having two different ones, that would be helpful. We can do that. Okay. Thank very you. good. Uh, and to, to answer kind of the other side of that question, you do end up with a lot of projects where, uh, for instance, the, um, the Lakefront Master Plan IDOT reimbursement. It takes IDOT sometimes one, two years or even more to um, request their reimbursement when they were involved in the project. So the, the portion of the Lakefront that's associated with the IDOT, um, with the Lakefront Master Plan reimbursement, that's done. It's been done but we've, we anticipate getting the bill. So we will need to um, pay the bill, and we did actually request funding for that, and we have funds in the Capital Improvements Fund right now to pay that bill when it arrives. So there's different examples of why we're carrying something over. Thank you. Alderman Fisk? Uh, thank you. Uh, Marty, on the previous page, could you just explain to me um, about the $81,000 for Sherman Avenue Public Art and our obligation to spend that money and what happens to that money if we don't spend it? I would defer to, to Doug, who's at the uh, podium. Uh, that's uh, part of the 1% um, uh, for art that was um, part of the Sherman Plaza uh, project, and that was a balance that was carried over there was one art piece that was completed. We paid that off. It was installed. We paid that off. And the $81,000 was a remainder. So the Public Art Committee has been working uh, over the last year or maybe uh, two, year and a half to uh, develop another proposal and to add uh, another piece of art in that area. Uh, and they have uh, uh, selected an artist and a project uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's been a, a discussion with the committee, and I believe you and uh, Alderman Fisk and Alderman Wilson are on that committee. Uh, and just recently, the artist has modified his um, proposal and installed um, a, a pilot um, into the uh, area of the garage and is awaiting, I think, uh, visitation from members of the committee. I think you and, and Alderman Wilson uh, to take a look at it uh, to see if it's uh, acceptable and then move on to uh, uh, complete the project. And, and what happens to that money if it's not spent? Well, uh, it would be a decision by the, I believe, the City Council to determine it's money that is uh, from the TIF and um, could be, I assume I would defer to uh, Mr. Lyons uh, as to the uh, conditions of how it could be spent, but it was part of the 1% for, for art. So that's a council, Ma Madam Mayor, Alderman Fisk, that's a council designation, and that designation could be changed. No way. Okay. Alderman Wilson? If I'm not mistaken, the 1% is per ordinance, correct? Yes. 
Okay, so that's, a, that's an ordinance that we have in place. So my understanding is if we don't use the 1% for art, we lose that fu those funds back to the county. Is that no. correct or not no. correct? But, but, but Madam Mayor, Alderman Wilson, it would take a, a legislative action of the council to, to change that. So uh, we, I don't know that we're prepared today to say if it would be an ordinance that would have to be amended in order to do that or if it would just be an action of the council, uh, but it would take an action. Otherwise, that money is designated for 1%. Mr. Yeah, Mayor. I think the ordinance, the language in the ordinance says up to 1%, and we would have to, uh, we could check that. But I think the ordinance is up to 1% of the total project dollars spent by the city on a city uh, building uh, project. So uh, it says up to 1%, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a full 1%, but I would want to check that. But we'll take it as a question. I, I, yeah, I'd like further information on that because the, the prior explanation I had was that uh, we could only use it for the art and there was no uh, other alternative because of the prior designation uh, to use it for anything else. Alderman Rainey. Well, it might be that we can't use it for anything else, but then it would just sit in the TIF if it were like the fifth year for 18 years until we dispose of the TIF. That doesn't make any sense that the money can't be used for anything else if we legislate that it could be used for something else. And it, it should be clear that this money, that the artwork is not... Um, based on the Sherman Plaza commercial. It's based on the fact that the city uh, owns a garage there. And that's the basis for the, the art fund, the public art. But I, I, I hope it says up to 1% because then we, we can just, you know, put it back in the fund and reallocate it. But it seems to me, I, I wish I had given more thought to this and talked to the aldermen involved, because the piece of public art that we have at that location is quite spectacular, and it, I just don't understand spending 80000 on another piece. But that's just me. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, and just, oh. just to be clear, uh, uh, Alderman Fisk and I are not promoting this particular piece of art. Okay. Right. Uh, we're on the committee, but uh, that doesn't mean we've selected it or promoting it. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Lyons. Uh, still on the slide six, uh, just to differentiate this slide from the next slides, you know, th these I would look at these as being the carryovers because, A, they are works actually in progress or works that are started and had prior approval. And to, I think, Alderman Burris's point then, those that hadn't been started certainly can be reallocated. If we're in process, then I think that's what the council is looking for, and we will have that um, for you. Going to the next set, then you're looking at um, other funded uh, uh, projects. So, the, and in this case, we're looking to carry over grants, carry over funding from CDBG or water or parking, et cetera. So, um, we have a CIP Excuse funding. Excuse me, Mr. Lyons. Alderman Burris has a question. We can take it further down, but once you get there, um, the oh. Maple Garage storefront improvement, can you talk just a little bit more about that when we get there and what we're doing to market that? Thanks. Um, I do, uh, I'll, I'll always take questions. So uh, um, the Maple Garage storefront improvement, this is, uh, as you may know, the uh, Maple Garage storefront. Uh, the uh, floor in there has the uh, aggregate at about uh, um, four inches, four inch aggregate, so a very rough. And what we are proposing here is, is that uh, um, to refinish that and make it more sellable by doing some of the improvements to the point where we will go ahead and rough in things. Before we've said, gee, we want to leave that all unattended and uh, make that a part of build-out costs. Well, that hasn't worked in this economy, so what we're proposing is doing the build-out and then uh, marketing it as a more finished space. Uh, just above that, when you'll, you will see in some of the, in, in next year's expenses um, and in the carryover area, uh, items such as the animal shelter and um, Grandmother Park, we are relying on private uh, funding for these projects as well as any city portion. So uh, when we look at ranking projects, this does impact where projects are ranked when there is other funding available. 
Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, I think I'll, I'll go to the next page because the, the rest, parking lots, we will always be doing parking lot improvements to maintain those. So I will keep on moving. Um, uh, our next uh, set of information, the SCADA project, that's our monitoring system. That's an ongoing project. Um, we are also, uh, we have quite a bit of uh, work. As you know, uh, we're still finishing up the switchgear project. A lot of that was reimbursed through insurance, uh, but we're still showing the expense regardless of um, the source of funding. So that total, again, that carryover, if you go back, was approximately $6.8 million, uh, 2.7 of which was from previously issued bonds. So what we want to make sure that folks understand is that we are trying to stay current with the money that is either borrowed or allocated, and that we don't have projects sitting on the shelf for a long period of time. We want them... Um, we want to request them from the council, perform them, and then move on and get the projects finished. So these are new projects, and this is just the, the uh, sources of funds. So uh, many of this will be uh, funds, for instance, the motor fuel tax, the community development block grant, Washington National TIF, et cetera. And then you see the, the listing within the capital improvements um, fund of sources where we're currently showing, I think, the big number there is the $6.3 million GO debt. Uh, with the current uh, budget as structured, we're looking at uh, potentially reducing that by $500,000 if we had a transfer from the general fund. We would then reduce the debt amount down to uh, $5.78 million. And if anyone has questions for, I think everyone's familiar also as far as, for instance, at the bottom, we have a, a sewer fund IEPA loan. And those loans are still at their, uh, I think the last one was uh, at 1.25% interest. They're, ba they're heading back up towards 2%, which is still not quite half what our general obligation debt rate is. Alderman Burris? Just want to be clear, we have... We've already borrowed $2.7 million to fund these projects, correct, that we have sitting in our CIP reserves that we're paying interest on? Yes. Okay. And now you're basically requesting, if we get the 500000 transfer from general fund to uh, this, then we would only borrow yet another, about 5.8. I know my math's a bit off on this. Um, so another 5.8 in debt correct okay that would be funded through property taxes okay if we do not go further in debt which you know I'm not happy about the debt problems here um, what could we not what could we not do I, and I would like to see I know you can't I know you can't do that off the top of your head and that's a bigger discussion I, I but we need to know that information if we choose not to go into further debt, what can't we do? Um, we just, this borrow and spend is got to stop at some point. And Alderman Burris, members of the council, uh, I think you'll see in a slide or two uh, what we are proposing. Uh, oh, and, and, the, and, 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 and the list we are proposing is a result of uh, very vigorous, animated discussions with our departments. And it's a list that started out, Mr. Lyons, three times as large on the GO side? Uh, we were at about 16 million. Okay, so about three times as large. So, <laughs> so the list that you're going to see are lists that we think are, are, are priorities. Uh, we'd be happy to talk with the council as we go through this on the larger uh, issues of capital. I mean, is there a project um, you know, that we will not get to. And quite honestly, uh, as you see the, uh, the projects that uh, are still being carried over, uh, there comes a point with existing staff on our, our sheer ability uh, to move projects forward. So there, there is some opportunity there. Um, an issue that I'll raise now, and I'm sure you, we will be discussing much more over the next few weeks, is uh, what options do we have with our reserves? And would it make sense uh, to take some money from our reserves uh, perhaps on a one-time basis uh, to uh, peel back the amount of debt that we'd be issuing. With that $500,000 shift, uh, I think that would make our general obligation debt which was probably the smallest 
it has been Mr. Lyons, is it sir, say 10 years if we're in the $5 million range? Well, last year was five, and this would be continuing on at that same. So, so we're so we're at historic lows uh, with uh, the debt, but uh, we have some options. And again, Mr. Lyons will get to our list of proposed projects for the 6.2 in just a few moments. Sorry, I jumped ahead. No problem. It's okay. Go ahead, Mr. Lyons. Um, once we leave those projects, th then you have the the detail of how do we allocate funds from our other sources. Um, we real, we uh, focus our motor fuel tax on our roads. The 1.4 million is all for roadway maintenance. We are uh, under state guidance as to how we may spend motor fuel tax. Uh, this allocation is, uh, we won't be able to hold this allocation at 1.4 million next year. We will have reduced the motor fuel tax fund balance to about three to four hundred thousand dollars and being in a calendar year now we will want to have that much available as a reserve so that once we let projects we can do the projects and have the cash flow we need so uh, in future years this will need to drop down a little bit uh, other areas uh, the uh, you have uh, funding from community development block grant and these are approved by a committee uh, and then uh, we have had a, a very good discussion over the last two to three months in a variety of forums about TIF spending. So uh, you see in this uh, capital improvements plan a lot more expenses on infrastructure from our TIF funds. So uh, and, I, and I'll be happy to go through any one of those um, projects or have a member of the department uh, come up to discuss them because we have uh, every alderman in their relevant ward we have attempted to make sure everyone is in the loop and if anyone uh, would like further information we would certainly be happy to give it at this point alderman rainey well as you know we've had numerous discussions and i've had them with the city manager and with each member of the council regarding spending out of the howard uh, ridge tiff for the coming year um, and there is a, a line item on here, Howard Ridge TIF fund funding 430000 and that's for a water main that we're not going to be doing. Um, but the additional expenses on what we are going to be doing is not listed here, and I want to make absolutely certain that that does not mean that it pushes forward to 2013. So... Um, can this either be adjusted or is this simply for information? This can be adjusted. Okay. And, and Alderman Rainey, members of the council, um, multiple tracks, as Mr. Lyons has discussed, uh, this is the, uh, what was in the documents that were made available a few weeks ago. Uh, those discussions regarding Howard Ridge have been ongoing, so it will be folded in either as part of this or, or shortly after the first of the year, depending on uh, the council's wishes. But uh, it's absolutely our plan to propose to the council um, those additional uh, fundings. I, it was my understanding that would be done in November. Uh, and that, that can certainly, that's still the plan okay. again. Right. Uh, okay. and, and our hope would be if the council's discussions conclude in time for budget adoption, it'll be included. If they don't, it'll be amended in. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Lyons. Uh, moving on, as we discussed before, uh, again, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. We do have you know, the, uh, some of the infrastructure that you see here uh, crosses over uh, into the economic development area. When we're talking about streetscape and hardscape, the items that are beyond the curb, uh, we, we really feel that those are necessary for the development of that area. This is not necessarily just a replacing of pavement. This is um, major improvements to the area to then stimulate the private development. So um, now again, as uh, the city manager pointed out, these are the projects that would be funded from general obligation debt. And when we went down this list, we had the, the major players, mostly uh, facilities and then um, public works. You won't see water sewer because they're funded elsewhere. But uh, so public works and facilities evaluate this and they um, rank them one, two, X. And we only made it down to about 15 or 16. You can see how many 
um, lines there are, and the the list was what was the list, uh, Doug? About 40, 45, 50. We had the the total number of projects is much longer, and we'd be happy to provide those that did not make the cut because we were trying to get to that below six million dollar mark. And I'll, I have a long term debt slide that kind of shows why we're trying to get to that lower number. I appreciate that, but I would like to see the list of what didn't make the cut. Um, and I, I, again, these are projects we have discussed. Um, for instance, the, the salt dome is not listed necessarily as a, a carryover. It is, we've changed that project drastically. So it's being shown here. This is, these are new funds, and we're talking about a, a different look at that. Um, but we do have, for instance, um, new projects, the city um, uh, works sign signal and street inventory. Uh, that was a new mandate from the federal government. So uh, we put it as a, a high priority because we're going to be compelled to have it done. Alderman Braithwaite. Marty, can you explain to me the line item for the citywide pavement evaluation? Certainly. Um, once every five years, once every X years, the um, city uh, evaluates all of the streets and really wants to take a look at those um, 12 inches down. We want to take a look at them to find out uh, which streets are going to need serious work versus which streets uh, can continue to be overlaid. And the, the reason for doing that is an overlay. I can do a block of overlay for um, uh, $100,000, but if, I'm, if we're going down 12 inches, it's $800,000. And uh, I hope you understand those are uh, numbers by example. And I'd be happy to have um, Suzette Robinson come up and discuss the overall plan in more detail. Suzette Robinson, Director of Public Works. Good morning, Mayor, City Council. City the award-winning Director of Public Works. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, as uh, Mr. Lyons um, indicated, um, it is time for us to do an, an upgrade to our five-year um, resurfacing plan, and we um, developed that plan as a result of an evaluation. We also do some inspections in the field, and of course, uh, we get input um, from City Council. But the evaluation process, we have a contractor that comes in and they t look at all the surfaces, um, road surfaces throughout the city, and they rate all the pavement. And so they will identify, from an engineering perspective, they'll give us a priority system and say, these are the roads that def definitely need to be resurfaced. And they will go into what type of resurfacing, whether there's um, substantial base failure or, um, as Mr. Lyons indicated, just a simple resurfacing would satisfy. Um, so we, we take all that information and we compile that into a proposed five-year plan. And we're ending, this is our sixth year of our five-year, our previous five-year plan uh, that we ended up extending out because some projects got delayed and for funding purposes. So now it's time um, in order for us to move forward to figure out what we do next, uh, we need to do an evaluation update. Thank you. Alderman Burris? Um, it's actually, I think it, this is for Marty. Um, in this list, where, or in the, the presentation, I, I apologize if I, I just couldn't find it, uh, where would we find the matching funds for the Tiger Grant for Church Street? The, that is not in this. This is the two-and-a-half-week-old document. So um, we have not put in the um, $4.7 or so uh, local match over the five years into this document yet. Um, that is a... I, I believe in an oversight if we, the majority of the council voted for it and we've now committed ourselves, but we're not, it's not being reflected in what money we're going to be spending out. And then that also would affect how much money, more money we're going to borrow. Then this is not an accurate reflection of going forward. I know that there is talk of we'll take some things off to match that. Um, once again, we need to asterisk that. Um, I know it's in a separate document, but when we're pulling up and giving this information, 
it's really not accurate for the public overall. We need to say this is what won't happen because we've committed 4.6, is that right? Million and, 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 and Madam Mayor Alderman Burris, this is a reminder is, is one year CIP uh, list. We will come back and make those adjustments. What we have done with the council is we have presented you a budget and our, uh, our, our past practice has been to make that at least one presentation on the document that the public has seen. So this is that presentation uh, for future discussions on the one year. Uh, we will have a different slide and we can make a table available to you as an answer. But I just want to make sure that everyone's clear. We feel an obligation to the community. Lots of numbers floating around uh, and our past practice has been to give you one presentation for the documents that are currently available to the community and then as the council deliberates makes those adjustments. So we'll have a table on the one year. Uh, I don't believe we have the, the yeah. long range CIP before you. So I don't know that those changes, we can, we will certainly make them as, as you see that document in the future, but we can make the change to the one year uh, document based on the council's decision making uh, a week ago. I just want as much updated possible. A absolutely. Thank but I just want to make sure that, that you and the council are aware we, there's lots of numbers floating around and we're trying to make this uh, as straightforward as possible and that's why we wanted to, to talk to the numbers that have been previously released first prior to changing those numbers. Alderman Fisk. Thanks Wally and I understand that uh, but I have a question for Suzette. Um, on the, um, the sidewalk uh, repairs and replacement in the downtown, are we going ahead with um, putting back more of the little decorative um, pavers or, or brick or are we going to concrete and uh, what can, can you estimate the cost savings in doing that um, we are going uh, back to the the concrete what we established for maple and the library the concrete uh, paver the concrete slabs with the decorative rows um, along the the curb so that's going to be the the standard and eventually we like to change out all of downtown Evanston so that it looks um, like that um, as far as the savings go, you know, it, that's a, it's a workers' comp issue. That's really more for, for legal to answer because, the, the, you know, that impacts um, the, the, the trip hazards, but the, the pavers themselves, whether we put down pavers or concrete, it's really cost neutral in terms of switching to just put in concrete. Okay, thanks. Alderman Holmes. Well, that was sort of my question in terms of asking about the uh, the number of places that I see um, brick sidewalk repair in terms of was there consideration about going to the concrete? So that's fine. I'm fine. Alderman Wilson. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Lines. Thank you. And just as a recap, um, a large well, I wouldn't say a large majority, but a majority of our brick replacement um, is in the TIF districts. So we have some in church. We have some in the downtown. <laughs> And then we are trying to leverage that where some of it is, as you see right there, 350000 is um, in the downtown that is not covered by the TIF. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, continuing on, uh, just uh, so that uh, we're, we are clear, this year uh, we are not bonding for the uh, uh, interfund transfer to the general fund to pay for all of the engineering services that are all those salaries that are housed in the general fund. So that is coming from reserves and we'll have to address that in future years as we uh, uh, those are allowable to be bonded for because the engineers are working on projects developing designs all a part of the actual um, construction process but we are um, not doing new bonds, or the new bonds are not covering that cost. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as we move further down, uh, again, we have capital improvements uh, funded from grants. So the Bridge Street, uh, the Bridge Rehab Program, um, Bridge Street, uh, also that bridge. And you'd see that one also funded from bonds as well. <clears throat> so it is partially funded. Again, to Alderman Burris's point of which projects are leveraged from other areas. We'll uh, get that information to you. Uh, again. Alderman Fisk. 
uh, could you explain uh, the Lakefront Lagoon area improvements and um, the $500,000 $500, gift that we got for the lagoon? I think Mr. And Gaynor would do it more justice than I would, so I will be happy to let him make the explanation. Mayor, members of council, um, and clerk, uh, well, uh, Doug Gaynor, Director of Parks, Recreation, Community Services. Um, several months ago, we had a private citizen, it's pretty unusual with, with these economic times, uh, who has come forward to donate $500,000 to renovate uh, the lagoon area. In addition to that, and, and I think you'll see uh, some of that here in this uh, presentation, uh, we have also tried to couple and leverage that $500,000 with a grant from the Department of Natural Resources. And in fact, this week, I attended and made a presentation to that grant committee down in Springfield for $400,000. And in the event we uh, are fortunate to receive that grant, we would have almost a million dollar project and we would be uh, coming back to council to uh, add 100000 from the city to make it a million dollars and, and, and do that. So that's the project. Uh, we don't anticipate hearing um, the results of our, our grant application until at least June of 2012. Senator Schoenberg's trying to help us to get this. Uh, Alderman Rainey? Um, did we go over uh, Schedule 13, slide 13? I mean, isn't that the list of things that we would have to do without if we weren't to go into yeah, further debt? Yeah. We did. Um, I'd be we happy to go, go through it. I didn't go through it in, in detail uh, and just asked if there were uh, questions. Um, I mean, I know you mentioned the salt dome, but what about, I mean, what's the significance of eliminating these projects? Are we going to talk about that? or No, Alderman no. Rainey, members of the council, this is our proposed list. We have not, we need to, in order to meet Alderman Burris's request, we need to edit this list uh, appropriately. So these are all proposed projects. These are not the projects that need to be eliminated for Tiger 3. These are no, all. No, no, no. These are, Alderman Burris asked, what would we have to eliminate if we did not go into further debt? the six million two hundred and eighty uh, prior to subtracting the five hundred thousand. These are those projects, are they not? They are those projects, okay. that is correct. Okay. And so we are we are not prepared uh, today to give you a rank order list okay. of things that you would not like. I guess first I would like to know if the council's desire is to issue no capital debt in the coming year, and if that's the case, then that's an easy list. If it's only a million dollars reduced or two million dollars reduced, we would then come back. So my, my sense from the discussion we just had with Alderman Burris was that the council would come back, talk about uh, your wishes here, and if you would set a dollar amount, uh, we would come back. Uh, or if you want us to prioritize these from one to, to 25 or whatever that number is, we will do that. But I, I, I was expecting additional discussion from the council. But one thing, Madam Mayor, I would like to suggest is that we move along because we have we want to talk about the the other part of the budget as well this morning. And I think we're we're nearly finished. Okay, uh, Alderman Burris. Uh, I apologize. I, I'm Let's all be mindful of Alderman Rainey's desire to move along, which I, is correct. I, I know, but, but once again, we don't spend enough time on CIP and. If we, if we spend a little bit of time on it, just like the last year we've been spending more time on the pension, and I think we've, we've made progress. Um, if we spend more time talking about this and really knowing what we're planning, then we can plan for the one year to five years. So I know we're taking a lot of time, but this is extremely important, um, and particularly when we're talking about putting out more debt. I mean, it, once again, you, you look at your your own personal finance, when you talk about putting out a lot of debt, I would think that you would think about it very seriously. So I'm sorry if I'm taking a lot of time on this. Um, the first one, the service center parking deck. Why isn't that coming out of the parking fund? Because, uh, Alderman Burris, this is our parking deck. It's for our own employees. So we do not, oh, I'm sorry. We do not fund service it for center. that. Yes. So there are several there are several service center projects uh, which the council reviewed last year which we've yeah. we've, we've had at least the beginnings yeah. of uh, my, my on mistake. There. I 
wasn't thinking it was a service and center thing. Just one thing, Madam Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, right now, these are in order of uh, the, the staff's ranking of priority. So if you were looking at them, they are um, ordered by uh, the staff's, the, the CIP team. Thank you. Alderman Rainey? Yes, well, um, Alderman Burris can go on and on as far as I'm concerned. That's fine. But I, I was really not that well prepared to discuss the CIP this morning because I either forgot or didn't know that that was going to be the primary topic of our conversation this morning. So that's all I meant. I, I was just anxious to get on to the... I, I just didn't know that that was going to be the, the focus of and, our... And meeting. Alderman Rainey, members of the yeah. council, we, that was not our intention. Our intention was we gave you an overview of the general fund at your last meeting. We're giving you an overview of the CIP, and then we're going to shut up and get out of the way and let you discuss. I, I mean, I agree with her that we need to do more work on the capital plan. Um, always we should. But I just didn't know We're that was going to be. talk more at your right. council's right. We can do it again. All right. Uh, just, uh, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead, Mr. Uh, moving on, uh, the special assessment fund is one more that I would call attention. This will be our last shot in the arm from the special assessment fund. Uh, moving forward, uh, the um, reserves in the special assessment fund will need to stay there to fund our long-term commitment for the 50-50 alleyway. So this is uh, a last um, hurrah where you, you would see on uh, the alley paving city share um, and, and uh, I think we had this is actually what we will do from now on that will be funded here we do have some other projects that were funded from the special assessment fund because we felt that we had accumulated um, a little bit of reserves that we could use elsewhere and still maintain a long-term public-private funding in the special assessment fund so uh, if we need to have a specific discussion on that would be happy to have that at a later date but uh, the um, special assessment funding for other projects other than alley that's a one-time event we won't have that next year uh, parking fund uh, one of the goals for the as far as sustainability one of the things we would like to do is a uh, parking meter upgrade citywide so this is a uh, meter upgrade may be a misnomer, might be replacements, opening up right of way and things of that nature. And we've discussed about that with the uh, parking, the transportation and parking committee um, briefly. And we'll move forward with reports during the year on that project. Madam Mayor, you have a light. Oh, thank you. Alderman Burris. Um, with some, so the citywide parking meter upgrade, um, can we also find out what our ROI would be on that? Because um, that might be a, a huge consideration, too. When we're talking about spending money, what will our return on that investment, similar to the license plate recognition software? Um, I know you can't, right, once again, or is it on another page? Sorry. It is not, but we will have that as a part of the overall report. I think that just helps us make better decisions, also on parking garage uh, maintenance, of how much money are we getting by what we're putting out. That has good decision-making. Thank you. And we are in the process of completing a 20-year evaluation of how the parking fund will look. It was done about three or four years ago. Um, our, our fund balance is going to be stable to continue to maintain the three decks as well as the rest of the infrastructure. Thank you. Um, the water fund, we've had a lot of discussions about water and sewer. This level of uh, capital projects maintains a minimum reserve in the water fund. Uh, we are talking about... Uh, uh, debt in the water fund, but as you may know or may recall, there is a, a fairly low amount of debt compared to our entire water system. So while on the other side we have high debt, the water fund is not in a high debt situation. Would you tell me, Mr. Lyons, what are our water costs uh, to people versus Chicago's? Well, our water costs, as far as the cost to produce, I, I'd uh, leave that to Dave Stonebeck. Um, as far as um, our rates, they are under the city of Chicago's presently, and Mr. Stonebeck's coming out to uh, answer it directly. I'm looking for an advertisement for buying Evanston's water, Dave. Uh, I just didn't want to do it inaccurately. Good morning, Madam Mayor, Alderman, and City Clerk. Uh, Dave Stonebeck, Director of Utilities. The cost for residents in Evanston per thousand gallons, which is not how they're billed, but 
they're built in hundred cubic feet, but the comparison is easier done in thousand gallons. So Scott, or Evanston charges two dollars and twenty three cents per thousand gallons. Right now, the city of Chicago charges two dollars and one cents. With their proposed rate increase next year of twenty five percent, Chicago will be at two dollars and fifty one cents a thousand gallons. Evanston is proposing a five percent rate increase, and we would go to two dollars and thirty four cents a thousand gallons. Thank you. And just to follow up, Madam Mayor, that is also our retail um, rate. So if you're, uh, if we're talking about the sale of water, then it is di a different set of numbers on a wholesale basis if we're looking to expand our, um, our sale of water. That's what we're looking to do. Thank you. Uh, and just what the final one on the, the sewer fund, you see that $4 million IEPA uh, we will come back with a long-term look at the sewer fund before moving ahead at all with any, um, re any issuance of debt. Uh, and uh, I've been working with Mr. Stonebeck already, along with the budget team, so that we can show um, the before and after effects of whether we continue to look at the low interest options on the IEPA loans. So it's very attractive, uh, but we want to make sure that we are not in a situation that we are currently in where the debt load is higher than the operating revenues. So debt, um, very quickly, um, uh, I probably would have liked to take that first bullet point out based on the, the discussion today, to, where I've said it's necessary. Um, that will be a council decision if we are going to continue on with um, maintenance at minimum levels, it may be necessary. Uh, the sewer fund, as a part of not raising sewer rates, we still have a $5 million um, debt issuance that will be general obligation debt in 2012 and $4 million in 2013. Uh, as we pointed out, one of the, uh, and the next slide will show this graphically, our goal is to get the, uh, the, the, the long-term capital is to get much of our ongoing capital provided through an ongoing revenue source. If we issue $5 million in debt 20 years in a row, we will effectively be getting $5 million worth of capital each year for $7.4 million. So we are proposing to head towards a pay-as-you-go method where our $5 million in revenue is set right towards $5 million in capital and taking out the interest calculation. So what does that look like? Well, if we do no new debt over 20 years, this is our debt, the, the red line is a debt service schedule for all of our current debt. Goes down to zero um, in, uh, by 2032. And again, this is our debt service paid from property taxes. We are not saying that we will have no debt. We will still have debt service in the Washington National Tip or debt service in the water or sewer or other funds. This is the debt service fund that would show up on the tax bill. If we go, the green line then is, if we go to a $5 million uh, annual, you can see we get down to about seven and a half, seven point three million million becomes our ongoing debt. And that is from 20 years of $5 million issues. So this is just uh, this is the summary again. Um, so we're at a, a, about just under 38 million dollars in total capital projects. 6.8 million is reauthorization from previous, and 31 million is uh, uh, from new projects. This is our schedule, and we can move on to other discussions. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. All right, everyone, we're at uh, budget discussion and consideration. Alderman Wilson. 
I guess I'll, I'll kick things off a little bit with uh, requests for some more specific information, which I realize we won't get today, but I would like to get that. Um, under the I'm sorry, under the Economic Development Fund category, um, if we could get breakdowns of the detail on, I call them line items, but 62136, 62259, 62260, and 62509. What, what the components of that are projected to be. For example, the redevelopment consulting, um, who, who are we planning to use and exactly for what purposes. Um, also under home fund, uh, on the rehab loan 65535, what's the detail on that? Thank you, Alderman Burris. I, I guess I'm just sorry. Gonna, <laughs> Keep going, Alderman. Gen generally, throw out there from, from a from a philosophical and conceptual perspective on the economic development funding. Um, our staff is extremely important, and I don't think we should uh, be cutting into the staff and, and their role and what they're doing. But I'm not comfortable with the uh, with the dollars out the door to the private uh, private businesses, given our economic environment. So. I would like to see us rein that in substantially. Thank you. Are you done? Yes. All right. Um, Alderman Burris. Uh, I, under the furlough days, which are currently below the line, um, if we instituted the furlough days, um, how many workers' jobs could we put back um, on the city? Well, I think we, we're at... 380,000 if we did the furlough days. And uh, the reason I'm asking is over the course of the last few years since the recession hit, we heard over and over again that many businesses went to their employees and said, would you be willing to take a cut or furlough days in order to keep other employees here at the companies? And I would, I would venture to say that other city employees would want to retain more employees and take a few furlough days across the board. Um, so just something to consider to keep more people on the payroll. Thank you. Alderman Grover. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to make sure that Mr. Lyons and Mr. Bobko has got my email from last night with a list of requests for information, clarification. We, we have. We have shared it with the rest of the council, and we will All have right. it for you at your next meeting. Right. I don't have my phone, so I haven't yes. been able to check in. Yes, we have. All right, I'm not seeing any more lights, which is why I'm not calling on you. Alderman Wilson? Since nobody else is talking. Um, going back to capital, or going over to capital improvement, um, I agree with Alderman Burst. I would like to uh, dial down the uh, borrowing to the extent possible and um, would like to keep it under uh, Mr. Lyons has prepared that, uh, that helpful chart with regard to the $5 million uh, uh, limitation, which is somewhat arbitrary, but it's helpful to see how that can bring us down to a, mo a more manageable uh, level as far as the debt payment or debt uh, service goes. So um, a couple things I just looked at myself on either not doing or deferring on. Um, I don't know that I agree with the Maple uh, Garage storefront improvements. Uh, at least doing that at all. Someone could choose to move in there and not even like what we've done. Um, I think the meters could wait, and um, uh, I've been known to leave here late at night, and I haven't been particularly worried about going through the parking lot, so I'm not sure what the problem is with the Civic Center lighting, so I'd be interested in knowing <coughs> what the details on the Civic Center lighting uh, problems are that uh, justify that three th three fifty three hundred fifty thousand dollars $350,000. So. Those three items, I guess, might be a start. Uh, city Manager. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the Council, it would be useful to me if, if, if the Council would, would like to perhaps talk a little bit more about this point, in that because it would be helpful to know if the Council is in agreement that we would like us to shoot for $5 million. Because if that is the case, we can come back to you at a next meeting with a proposal on how to get there. Um, 
so we're, we're, we're kind of now where the rubber meets the road as far as time to talk about the budget. You have a little bit of time allocated on, uh, on November 14th. You have all of November 16th. So I guess, my, Madam Mayor, if it's, if it's all right with you, would, would ask that question of the council. Uh, are you all in agreement that we should shoot for $5 million? And if that's the case, we'll come up with a plan that is only $5 million. But to me, at least. Yes. Is anyone? That, that's, I was just going to respond. We'd certainly like to see that, definitely. Um, Alderman Wilson? I, that's, I was just going to ask for that. Did, are, are you finished? Okay, yeah. um, Alderman Rainey. I, I want to know if we're talking about $5 million of GEO bond debt or $5 million total new debt this year. What Could you be more specific about just picking a number out of the air and saying that's that's what it is. What what are we talking about? Alderman Rainey, members of the council, my understanding is it's five million of geo bond debt. Madam Mayor. Um, yes. Uh, just one point. The five million is not necessarily just uh, an arbitrary number. What we are hoping to look at is when you look at the the debt table, we're retiring anywhere from six to eight million dollars of geo debt each year so our goal is is to stay below the amount that we're retiring so that we continue to cut into the total outstanding thank you alderman holmes okay that helped a little bit but i also if people uh, if other aldermen have special things that they want to talk about i wish we could share that now before we ask the staff to go back and come back with the uh, five million um total do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Because it, it, well, it's it's really helpful for me sometimes to understand where people are coming from because we'll get we'll ask you to go and do something and then we'll come up with something completely new, and I would like to and and that's possible. I understand that people have their opinion about things, but if you have something now that um, you are particularly concerned about, you want to make sure that it stays in. Could we uh, sort of talk about that? I don't. And I don't have any. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Burris. I'm just responding to Alderman Holmes. I, I would say uh, pay, re, road paving uh, would definitely want to keep in uh, the CIP as an important thing. And once again, uh, what I had mentioned earlier of where, what are the programs that will get us a return on our investment? I think that those actually need to be delineated out in the capital improvement because that's similar to abated and unabated bonds. It's like, what is going out there and we're not going to see a return, such as road paving, versus we're going to pay for the license plate recognition software, we may get money back, or even the Maple Garage. And I agree we should do something, but maybe not a full build out. But that's going to get, we, we may be able to rent that and then get revenue in the door. So we need to have a better understanding of revenue, or uh, expenses out and revenue in, and I don't think that we, we fully understand that for this particular, um, th these particular charts. Does that, well, I don't know if that answered your question or well, not. Well, I, I hear you, except that I think that we should also understand that by delaying sometimes repairs, we do more damage to ourselves because if you, there are certain things that need repairing. I mean, infrastructure needs to be taken care of. And if we can keep deferring and deferring, it just only makes more and more debt for the taxpayers because then we'll have to come back and pay more. So that's why I'm asking, you know, sometimes if we could talk about that a little bit before we ask staff to go off and do a whole lot of work uh, about it and then come back and say, oh, yeah, you know, we don't want the Maple Street garage to fall down on top of us, so we need to do those repairs. And that's all I'm trying to get before we ask for a lot of more information. I mean, we have to do a lot of reading to get all this done, so I'm, try I'm trying to keep up with it. Uh, well, my example would be I'm less interested in whether we have a greenhouse at the Ecology Center. You know, I'd, I'd be willing to, to look at fixing the wall and deciding that a greenhouse is not an essential city service. Um, Alderman Tendum. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I agree with the uh, street pavement uh, ongoing project. I think it's one of the ones, certainly an issue I hear most about in my ward and throughout the city that the streets just, uh, we're not keeping up. We're actually probably losing ground or just keeping, staying even with that. So I think that's an area that I would like not to see cut. 
Um, second, I have a couple questions. What are, what are, what's planned for civic center renovations? That's close to half a million dollars. And then why are we spending money on the metro station? Is that um, some part of that station that we own or control? Uh, Madam Mayor, Alderman Tendum, uh, Mr. Gaynor will come talk about the Civic Center. Um, there's still lots and lots and lots to do with the Civic Center, and my hope is sometime next year to uh, ask the council to re-engage the Civic Center committee uh, to begin looking at the larger pieces. But what we've tried to do is uh, uh, prioritize mostly life safety uh, issues uh, and also the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Um, Mr. Gaynor? Yeah, uh, members of the council, Madam Mayor and, and City Clerk, uh, what we've proposed for next year uh, is some painting, uh, a fire pump, uh, which is a life safety issue to finish that project, uh, to look at some renovations of our restrooms. Uh, most of our restrooms do not meet the American with Disabilities Act. So we're looking at very slowly with really minimal uh, funds based on the uh, significant costs of doing some of these projects of just sort of pecking away at. So it might be one restroom, it might cost us two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars because as, as you know for instance the men's restroom on the first floor has a step and in order for us to make that ADA that step goes away. We have to take out the whole floor which means we have to redo that whole plumbing and everything that's below the floor surface. So. We haven't done a total investigation, but that's just the huge cost for one project to make it ADA. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. And the city manager has asked us to sort of put a priority list, but he's also indicated that we should set the, uh, try to get the Civic Center Committee together to look at a list of all of the projects and then create a, a priority list. Uh, Alderman Tendon, in a part of our budgeting, we looked at a comprehensive study of what needs to be done in the building. And we rejected that because we felt it was more important to actually spend money on the needs we already know are significant in the building. Uh, we have serious, I don't think serious is an overstatement, plumbing issues in, yeah. this, in this building. We have uh, uh, urinals and toilets uh, that don't consistently have enough water pressure in the building to operate efficiently. So uh, with the restroom improvements, we also, there also would be money for some the beginnings of plumbing repair, Absolutely. but there are more significant issues with plumbing, with all the HVAC units in this building, uh, with electrical issues, uh, and now that the, the city has decided to stay in this building, um, there are much larger plans. But again, we hear very, we hear you say, stop hiring consultants, don't hire consultants. We don't need a consultant to tell us we have bathroom problems. And so we're rather, we're spending the money instead to try to begin to fix those, those problems. Uh, we're trying not to, to, to deal with cosmetics, uh, but we are doing some things like painting. We are using city forces uh, to put additional lighting, and we hear from our employees uh, that, you know, th there are many corridors in this building that don't really have lights, and uh, uh, we're trying to, to fix that. We have bought cabinets uh, for uh, copy paper just to try to clean up the appearance of the building. So we're, we're not spending big dollars on this. Uh, but we're just trying to, you know, do what we need to do uh, to keep the building operating and then hopefully during 2012 start a larger discussion about the, the long-term needs of this building um, if the city of Evanston is going to use it as a civic center, uh, I, I think, for the foreseeable future. With all of those things listed so that we would know what they all are. That's correct. And, and again, our, 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 our proposal for... 2012 was not to ask you to spend money identifying those problems in 2012, but instead spend money to fix the most, uh, the most serious problems in 2012. Alderman Rainey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've been um, listening to the public's comments regarding uh, the forestry department um, and, and other departments where there's going to be layoffs, and also the, um, the information technology department. Um, I'm not prepared to make a motion today about the information technology um, uh, removal, but I'm going to do some more study on that. However, I am going to suggest that anyone who has not read the staff memos regarding the cutting of the four forestry workers, do so. As well as the um, secretary, 
let's see, what is it, a Secretary 2 position. On pages 51 and 53 are staff comments, um, department comments, actually, regarding the elimination of these five positions. Um, we will be severely impacted with the loss of these positions. Yes, we can outsource uh, the four forestry workers. However, we can outsource only certain tasks. Um, staff has given us a memo that argues in opposition of eliminating these positions. And I am going to ask the council to support my motion right now to reinstate these five positions. Um, it's my understanding that the secretary two position, I'm, I was having a little trouble getting the exact numbers, um, but I believe on page um, 17 of the budget, um, there's an outline of the costs. And the secretary two position I believe is $64,000. That's correct. Pardon me? That's correct. Okay. I'd like to uh, restore that to the budget. There is a list, there is a two-page list of duties this person performs. Um, and there is an indication that without this person performing them, and I'm sure there's somebody else at City Hall who has a few hours a day who can fill in some of these things, but not all of them. So $64,000 for that position, and then, um, because I think this is a package, uh, the four positions in Parks and Forestry, and. I think the way to calculate that is the 243,000 plus the 140,000, is that it? I, I couldn't quite figure that out. On the same page, on page 17, and, and it all says forestry program modification, four parks and forestry worker, three positions, and addition of 243 in contract. I can't quite figure that out. And Alderman Rainey, members of the council, the 140,000 is a net number. And because number, because okay. the, the, the savings for the reduction of those four really is the sum of those two numbers. Okay, that's, we are, we and so that's that why be, I'm suggesting 383,000, which is the total of those two numbers. Um, no, no, that's not problem. that's no? not correct no. because if, if, if you if you are if you are reinstating the positions, <laughs> you do not need the contract. Oh, so, I thought. Okay, so, so, it's, so I thought it's the hundred. Okay, tell me. It's the 140 plus the 64. Is that correct? But oh, is staff? that it? No, I don't yes, think that so. that is it. Because again, we are not proposing that that the work go away. The the, the you are correct. The, Mr. Gaynor in the Parks and Rec Department has listed uh, the work that is done. Much of that work will be done by contractors. No, Some I of don't, it will I, not be done. Well, by contractors. except except reading reading the evaluation of the loss of those positions. You know, it's sort of like hiring Groot. Yeah, they'll come through and they'll pick up the garbage, but there are other things that aren't going to get done. So the, they're not, the, the uh, tree trimmers are not going to be right, driving trucks helping to remove snow. They're not going to be running out in emergencies as quickly as our people do now. So I, I think that it would be important for every member of the council to commit to reading the evaluation of staff if they haven't already done so. Um, because as a resident of this community, I don't want to be without those services. And I think the, the savings here is really minimal in the scheme of things, really minimal given the services provide, provided. So I'm, I'm going to move I, I don't understand the forestry um, uh, worker three, the four positions. If we were not to remove them and recommend the outsourcing, what would be the total cost of keeping them in? Madam Mayor, Alderman Rainey, um, the total cost, if the council chooses to um, chooses to uh, keep the positions in, uh, that is a net cost uh, taking away the contract of $140,000. So if you put that position, those positions back in plus the secretary, that leaves you with another $204,000 uh, either of additional revenue or additional cuts to balance. Thank you. 
then this explanation isn't so okay. So all right. All right. So that's what I want to do. Yeah. You've made a motion. I thought it was more than that. Yeah. So Alderman Rainey, you're making a motion. Yes. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, the the other p forestry position is vacant, and I'm not, you know, I know that's important too, but can you, I'm going to leave it vacant. Can you, can All right, Alder. The motion. I'm yes. Sorry. I'm, I'm moving to restore to our budget the um, secretary to position in the amount of $64,000, and uh, the four parks and forestry, three workers, uh, and the amount of 200, and still not clear. $140,000. That would be the net impact to the budget. With an additional 140000 Alderman Fisk? Um, no, I had my light on to talk on something else. Oh, okay. Um, to talk on this topic, uh, Alderman Wilson. Uh, I, I do agree with Alderman Rainey on uh, trying to keep the staff. Uh, the biggest need, of course, if there's a storm, if there's a big snowstorm, if there's some sort of emergency, when that happens, the contractor is not going to be available because there are going to be too many cities who have snow and emergencies to deal with. <clears throat> you can't budget for that. And um, it's pretty clear to me that throughout the year we do have um, – other things for these people to do. It's not like they're sitting around doing nothing. So I, I do agree with that. For today, though, I'm not sure. Let's put it this way. It's easy to add things back in. It's a lot harder to take things out. So um, I've been trying to devote my t energies on finding what we can, what we can effectively take out. Um, but I do agree with, with keeping that staff. I also i will add to that mix, generally speaking, and again, I'm not going to make a motion today, but I think we should look at a way to keep the, um, the crossing guards in here, whether it's a uh, partial contribution from the schools, which um, I've at least talked to, I've talked to at least one, uh, I've talked to one administration who hasn't volunteered to do that. But um, uh, I'm hopeful that we can have further conversations with the schools to assist with that. Um, I don't think we're going to get the same value as far as the quality of uh, the people that, that, the, uh, that the parents are trusting to get their kids back and forth to school. So um, that said, Alderman Ray, I support that 100 percent, but I, I'm, I don't know that I'm comfortable voting on it today until we find other things to take out to make sure it, we get to an appropriate number. And I don't want to, I, I, somebody mentioned, maybe Mr. Lyons, maybe somebody else, um, or maybe the city manager, I don't agree with, quote, one time, uh, tapping into the reserves. So it's never one time. A couple of years ago, I think before this council, there was a, a one-time uh, use of the reserves. And um, I don't want to go that route. So I want to get this budget balanced with realistic numbers. Alderman Burris. Well, I have a, f a few comments. In principle, I agree with the motion on the table, but at the same time, I, if we're going to put something back in, we need to also counter it of what are we going to take out. Um, without putting stuff in, we need, we need to have, a, I think, a suggestion on, on both sides of, of the, uh, the ledger. Um, and I want to bring up the furlough days again, and I, and I apologize I didn't notice this earlier, when it said uh, uh, subject to collective bargaining, and, and you may or may not be able to answer this question at this point, where is the union coming down on do we want to keep more workers and we're willing to give some furlough days? Um, where is the union coming on uh, uh, more cost from workers for health insurance that they're willing to pay to keep more workers? I mean, this is a, this is a balancing act. So we can easily keep more workers if we do the furlough days. We're talking 302000 for the furlough days and to uh, keep the the uh, motion that Alderman Rainey made, that's 204000 so we're still a little bit ahead of the game. Um, I also want to go down the, the below the line list, which is on page 18 on the, uh, on the electronic uh, version. There, there are pieces in here that if we're 
want to keep people on staff, this is easy enough to do. We already have a vacant, um, two vacant positions, so we're not getting rid of anybody for the zoning planner as well as the parking enforcement. Um, and with the license plate recognition, we don't necessarily need more parking enforcement because it will be easier to do. Um, the transfer of cost of ticket collection agency fee, um, how much is that per, per violation? So there are a lot of things below the line that seem to make more sense if we want to keep more, that we can move above the line to keep more workers in place. Thank you. I think people do want to speak to the motion on the floor. Um, I have Alderman Grover. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd, I'd love to vote on the motion, except I'm not prepared to do it today. I think I need more time to digest all the information we have and uh, uh, to actually bring my reasoning around to agreeing with your motion. And um, so I, I don't know what the protocol would be. I, whether we're Alderman here, Rainey would like hold to the tell motion you. for another time, but I'd like to consider it. But I'd like more time to really digest the information to cast a knowledgeable vote. Uh, city Manager, you. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, in answers to all of your questions, I've asked the departments to give their honest estimation. And so the information you've received from Mr. Gaynor and Parks and Recreation regarding the impacts to forestry is his and his departments. Uh, I have a slightly different take on the situation. Um, first and foremost, uh, uh, when I look at the overall budget, uh, I think contracting is a bad idea. I think the, the work that our employees do is very, very important. However, you have a deficit that has to be made up. You have a budget that has to be balanced. And the, the reason that there is not more contracting proposed in this budget is I don't think it makes sense. Uh, I propose what I think makes sense and what I think we can do um, to a level that will not significantly impact the residents of Evanston. Uh, we will have, with the reduction of the four forestry workers, we will still have uh, additional staff that will be doing forestry and will have the ability to do uh, not only their daily jobs, but also um, the, the other things that Mr. Gaynor listed in his memorandum. Uh, the issue of snow, we've gone through that. We do not believe that uh, the reduction of those four employees will have any impact on our snow operations. We, have, we draw from employees from Public Works, Park Recreation, Forestry, and Utilities uh, to provide snow removal. And in talking with Ms. Robinson, uh, we don't believe that these reductions have any impact on, uh, on our snow removal. Uh, these are difficult decisions, these are people's lives, but the reality is there's a budget to be balanced and uh, as we looked at other communities and the uh, almost exclusive contracting that goes on in forestry and all of our surrounding communities, uh, it was my judgment and my recommendation to you uh, that these four positions made sense. On the issue of the secretary, again, Mr. Gaynor, his staff uh, listed all of the, the work that is done. The reality, however, is that there are other clerical positions in Parks, Recreation, Forestry uh, that could handle uh, some of this work. There are other positions within that very division uh, that could handle that work. Um, 311 has had a significant impact on forestry. Uh, people are no longer calling the secretary directly. They're calling 311. Um, and so, again, while it's always difficult to recommend reductions in force, uh, here is an instance, I think, that there are other staff within Parks and Recreation, other staff within that division um, that can handle uh, some of those, those, those work. Uh, again, there's very little contracting proposed here because I've heard from you and I've heard from the community uh, that that doesn't meet the standards of the community, and I agree. Uh, but in order to balance this budget without raising taxes more or laying off people from other parts of the organization, uh, I felt that these were prudent recommendations and I would urge your further consideration. Alderman Holmes. Answer for you in terms of how of how the um, conclusion was um, made in terms of these positions. So, thank you, Alderman Rainey. Well, I think one of the things that I wanted to do today is to get stuff on the table um, or off the table and onto our agenda. And. What happens when we deal with the budget, especially um, lately, last few years, is that, you know, it gets to be uh, 12 o'clock at night, the night we have to pass the budget, 
and we're scrambling for motions or we're just giving in and accepting what was dumped on us. Um, I don't see that the budget needs to be balanced uh, by noon today. It, it doesn't have to be. So there can be things out of, of uh, it doesn't have to be budgeted. So I can put back in, if I had the votes, the four forestry workers and the secretary too. And then at our next meeting, or maybe later on this, this morning, I can come up with some other ideas, or another alderman can come up with other ideas. One person doesn't have to balance this budget. It is just a way of getting things out there for the discussion. It also sends out to the community um, a, an option for spending in the budget. And I, I, I mean, I've never heard that one person can't make a recommendation without the opposite, the opposite revenue. I will come back and do that. But I don't think for every, every spending item there has to be a revenue item immediately by the time we end up passing the budget. Of course, I've, I've done this before. I know that's the case. But I'm saying right now that I would like to put that in. I would like to get support for it. And if not, secondly, I think the evaluation is interesting. What is the point of having department heads telling us how essential these workers are and then having the city manager saying uh, they're not essential and we, we feel sorry for their families, but this job is not essential. I'm thinking about my constituents and me on my block with these services being provided. And, you know, when I, getting ready to pay the tax bill on Monday, I, I, I really feel that I want to be paying for this. So um, I, I just think it's important that we do this. Thank you. Alderman Fisk. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I thought you had forgotten me. I did not. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I agree with Alderman Rainey. I, you know, time and time again, the city manager has asked us to give him some direction and seems frustrated when we sit here and we keep putting things off and putting things off. And, you know, I support the retention of the forestry workers. I think there's a, a very solid case for that, as well as the secretary. And, uh, again, I agree with Alderman Rainey that once we make this suggestion, we shouldn't be required at the same moment to come up with a with a decrease. It's just, it's just not the way that we can have, I think, a pr productive discussion up here. Um, so I would, uh, as I did before, I second Alderman Rainey's motion. I hope there's votes to support this, and this is something that we can at least put aside and tell the city manager this is, this is a decision that has now been made, and now we're going to work with it. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Burris? My point about this motion and about making the other side of the ledger is it's so easy to sit up here and say we, what we should spend and make people happy in the audience and make your constituents happy. It's much harder to learn how to cut and to learn how to say where are the revenues coming from. So my point is if we're going to say let's put something back in it's very good to have an idea of where you're going to take that money out of and make a suggestion for that. That's a responsible way to go about doing this versus being the hero and putting things back above the line without giving the city manager direction on what we should cut. That is my point, and that is what we aren't doing and we haven't done for two years, and we get to the very end, and that's where it becomes really hard for everybody and then certain people become the bad guys on console because we have to actually figure out how to balance it after other people have thrown things back in. So what I'm asking from council members is when you say put something above the line, please give us an idea of what you would like to cut. Alderman Fisk? Yeah, the problem is that 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 complicates the discussion. It makes a it makes a motion almost impossible. No, no, wait, no, wait. It makes a it makes a motion almost impossible because then that motion is tied to a cut as well as to a, a reinstatement. And that's I, I don't think any of us up here um, doubt for a moment that if something is going to be reinstated, that there's going to have to be other cuts. And that discussion will come. 
but and, and I don't think any of us are really trying to be heroes. We're trying to be realistic about what services are necessary and um, uh, to the efficient and effective running of, um, of our government and of the city. And that's what I think is reflected in the um, in Alderman Rainey's proposal to retain these workers. Thank you. Alderman Rainey? Well, I do have a proposal for revenue. I don't have another proposal right now for cut. Um, but I do believe there are other cuts that can be made in this budget. And my proposal for revenue was recommended in um, the budget memos, and that is to make parking meters, uh, to increase parking meters by 25 cents. I think parking in this town should be a dollar an hour at a meter. Um, I'm not interested in sanctions and raising fines or, you know, going out and getting people who overstay their welcome at meters. But I think that anybody who's ever parked in Chicago um, knows that you've got to pay the meter. And I'm, I'm supporting the increase of 25 cents in the, in the meters for the hour. And that would generate over $600,000, according to our staff memo. And I would recommend that of that $600,000, 500 be transferred from the parking fund to the general fund, because that would be totally new revenue. And so, you I'll see? Second that. Third, good job. Now, see, I want to be your hero. I don't <laughs> know those people, but I know you. And I think that this is absolutely, absolutely the way to go, that our parking meter revenue, we need to very carefully skim it off and send it to the general fund because it is our taxpayers and our visitors that are contributing to those meters. Mm -hmm. And anybody who can't spend a buck for an hour of parking, uh, you know, they should go in the garage and get an hour for free. So that, that would be my revenue raising. So I got a Second whole bunch one. of money left over that oh, now I, we can, can all spend. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Holmes. I had my light on for something else, but now, Alderman Rainey, since you found all that money, then I'm <laughs> going to propose that we, because it's very, very difficult when we talk about eliminating positions for people. That's very, very hard. So then maybe what we need to do is put them all back on and um, I, you know, that what, there's just two more positions, right? And that would be, one. I'm not no, no, I meant, I don't mean just forestry. I'm talking about the IT position and also the uh, parking person um, because they're people too. So if we have the money, then why not put the ball back? Are, are you tying that to your motion? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm, since I was okay. actually, as I said, I actually had my light on for something else, but since Al Marini came up with the money, he found the place Okay, so in, in order to retain the forestry workers, we're going to be increasing parking rates, and that's, that's part of the entire motion now. And I'm saying then, okay. in addition to that, to do that, then let's replace all the positions of people and um, that, you know, that are going to be eliminated, and I would vote then for the increase in parking. Alderman Holmes. Is it just the two? There's there's thir there's eleven filled positions. So you're proposing to put all eleven positions back in the budget? Not the eliminated one. I mean, not the vacant one. Okay. I'll so no, so there's two that we make it to thirteen. So there's eleven positions that are proposed to be eliminated in this budget. Mm -hmm. So you're proposing to put them all back. I don't know oh, that that the dollar amounts that Alderman that. Rainey has mentioned will fund all of that. Point of order. There's a motion on the floor to increase, to re restore the four forestry workers and the secretary. That's my motion. I said that after we get done with that, because Alderman uh, Burris challenged me on not providing revenue, that I was, my intention has been all along to make the second motion, but that's not part of my first motion. All right, it's an amendment that Alderman Holmes has. But that's to include all 11. I, don't, no. I can't even tell you what okay. those 11 are. I'm not, You're not accepting that as a friendly no, no, amendment. I want to know if she can tell me, remind me what they are, what page it's on, and I'll go look at it. Um, will be the, if I'm not mistaken, it's the crossing guards. 
and is that right, um, um, City Manager, and the IT and the Parking Supervisor? I believe. No, uh, Alderman Holmes, members of the Council. It's it's more than that. It, oh, okay. And uh, Madam Mayor, I don't want to take this conversation further afield if you don't want it to go further afield. All right. It would be my suggestion that we vote on Alderman Rainey's motion. Um, since I'm, unless Alderman Holmes, you're a com Alderman Holmes, give me the screen. It's on the screen, uh, Alderman Rainey. It's it's page uh, uh, page 13, 13 of the transmittal memo. It does not include the crossing guards. The crossing guards are part-time employees, um, and so they are not included here. But uh, that includes, and I don't oh, know if no. we have an easy dollar amount. Um, Available with the, the cash value of all the positions, but that but that is a listing of all the positions, the eleven positions plus the two vacancies, including. The, so it's thirteen total. Okay, I I'm sorry, I missed then I misread that in terms of when you said that they're all thirteen. I I'm sorry, I had forgotten about the other. No, I only meant then. I only meant, no, I didn't even mean the crossing guards. I was really talking about replacing the IT and the um, IT tech support and the uh, parking um, systems, mainly because those were the people that we heard from. But um, I accept that amendment. That's what I was really referring to. I, I, I just wanted to know why. Okay. So we have two, well, we have a motion on the floor to restore the forestry workers and secretary and the IT person and one more. Parking. And the parking, parking systems. Yes, thank you. Madam Mayor, yes. that, that, that has, her amendment has to include a following um, motion to increase the parking. I mean, the, the and that was a parking. Okay. Right. And, and to increase the parking rights. All right. Alderman Wilson, do you want to speak to that? I do. <laughs> and at last, at last meeting, I suggested we entertain that 25 percent or that 25 cent increase. But, um, and I appreciate that you are suggesting uh, a revenue trade-off, but um, we're basically resigning ourselves to the tax increase, to no significant cuts, and... Um, Generally, I agree with Alderman Burris that we should be looking at this more globally. To me, what we should be doing is having a conversation about ideas and concepts and not necessarily zeroing in on one particular thing. The last thing in the world I want to do is to give someone um, confidence and to pull that out of the rug in, in a month and a half. To me, that would be outrageous. And, and I don't think in this process we can necessarily guarantee that some of that might not end up happening because we saw it happen years ago with with libraries and other things. So I, I'm real hesitant to to go ahead and make a final decision on anything. I, I agree 100 percent. I think we should keep uh, these forestry and the, uh, and some of these staff positions, and that's what I'm working toward. But I, I really uh, really hesitate to make a, to take a vote on it right now. Um, you know, I've I've got my list of things I think we should change. I think we shouldn't buy. Uh, we should stop buying private property. For the time being, uh, maybe not plant new trees for a little while, uh, eliminate the redevelopment co consulting, um, and a bunch of cuts for the capital improvement loans or capital improvement. But um, you know, that's all for down the road. You know, I've requested information. We'll get the information, and it might or might not be appropriate. But it's hard to go ahead and make a final call on something, and I don't want to have people change their minds later once we've delved into it more carefully. Uh, thank you. Alderman Fisk, did you still want to speak again? Your light was on at one yeah, point. No. Alderman uh, Braithwaite. Okay, I hope I'm speaking on the uh, on the topic of the, the motion that's on the floor. Yes, please. And from what I understand, we also have other topics to discuss, so this is just the first of, of many to come. Um, I am in support of the motion uh, to support Alderman Holmes to add the other two positions. I also had the question about the parking position uh, based on the resident that uh, spoke earlier this morning. And, and in support of that motion, I am curious to understand if, if it was an elimination of the position or the person that was asked. And, and the reason that I ask that is because, from my understanding, the position is paid out of the parking fund. So are we eliminating that 
position from the parking fund or or as the resident asks, are we eliminating that person? Which I thought was a very valid question, so I don't want to dismiss that. So as part of the evaluation process and in support of the motion, I would like to support Alderman Holmes and Alderman Rainey in their uh, combined motion to add the other two positions uh, back into the budget and then go through the evaluation process. City Manager, could you answer that? Yes, all members Braithwaite, members of the council. First and foremost, we do not eliminate people, we eliminate positions. Uh, everyone who works for us, I think, works very hard. Um, we do not eliminate people. Uh, this position uh, in parking has uh, been merged with uh, uh, others who work in our, our revenue operations. Uh, Mr. Lyons uh, wears the hat as interim administrative services director as well, and he can speak to uh, the reasons why we've put forward the, the reduction uh, because of the, the duties of the particular position. Mr. Lyons. Thank you. Um, two years ago, the uh, parking and the uh, revenue collections offices were merged. And at that point in time, we effectively ended up with two, two managers, one um, lead clerk, and then uh, several clerks. And at that point in time, we referenced the fact that there, you know, there could be further reductions depending on how the operation is working. Uh, we have since made additional changes. Uh, we have a parking manager who now is actively supervising um, the revenue office along with uh, the finance manager, interim finance manager sitting to my left. So we have management in place for our revenue slash parking collections operations. So the decision is that the remaining mid-level management position isn't needed and it's being suggested to be removed because we would like to continue to but the, our, our goal is to balance the budget in the general fund. The proposal and what you see the costs in the balancing worksheet is actually the costs for the lead clerk position. That's what will be transferred to the parking fund as a, as a savings for the general fund. So the parking fund will have the elimination of the manager position, but it will assume the costs for the remaining lead clerk thereby saving the general fund money. So the statement was true, that position is in the parking fund, and you know, the, those savings will go to the parking fund, but the general fund will transfer the costs of another person in collections so to get the savings. So yes, it is a transfer of, of people along with the reduction, uh, but the, the goal is we have a mid-level management position that after the consolidation is not needed. And, and Madam Mayor, members of the council, we're, we're trying to make uh, this process as, as easy as possible. And when we identify efficiencies, uh, we, we, we feel obligated to bring them forward to you. And we, we feel this is an efficiency. Yes, an individual is impacted by it. But when we're trying to balance the, the budget citywide, um, you know, it, was, it was an opportunity for us to try to be more efficient. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. I think I left my light on, um, but I just wanted to comment on um, the references to individuals being eliminated, and we know it's an individual. When I talk about restoring anything or cutting anything, I am only talking about the services provided. For the most part, I have no idea who the people are who are serving in these positions. So. Um, while, yes, that is an issue, we're talking about public services being provided by public funds, and that's, that's my interest here. So, I mean, I'm not heartless or anything, but the, <laughs> issue, the issue is people are providing a service, and that's where the people come in, in my mind, not their personal lives, et cetera. Thank you. Alderman Grover? Uh, thank you. As part of Alderman Rainey's motion amended by Alderman Holmes. Uh, the secretary to position in forestry is part of the motion. Could I have more information about the extent to which 311 has assumed some of the time, the duties of that position? And, and Madam Mayor, members of the council, if, if I may perhaps direct you to the, uh, the memo that Mr. Gaynor prepared uh, 
on the subject because I think he did a, a good job of, of listing uh, the multiple responsibilities. Uh, uh, certainly a good portion of this position has been that customer service, uh, taking in the complaints, um, and that largely has gone to 311. There are additional services that this position provides um, as far as the assistance with scheduling. Uh, there are administrative uh, work that's provided, uh, payroll um, associated with that, and I'm looking if budget staff has the page number I'm looking for. I'd appreciate it. Uh, page 52. Um, so those are details. Are, but again, Madam Mayor, members of the council, we're trying to find efficiencies for you. We're trying to look at the organization and say, okay, uh, if we have to recommend a reduction uh, and that position is not going to be done, again, on page 52, it lists what's going on. Uh, some of these things um, can be done. Many of these things can be done by others in the department. There is an existing secretary within the same division who works in facilities. Uh, my thought back to the department was is that many of these administrative uh, things, uh, the, uh, the employee personnel files, the, the create, update, and monitor departmental forms, update city and other forms, uh, many of these things can be done either by the, the secretary that's already uh, works for Mr. D'Agostino in facilities maintenance um, or other parts of the department. Um, that secretary position can also help with uh, uh, some of the work that's done with, with the trees. Now, uh, we also believe, I also believe, that there's technology that can, can be helpful with this. Uh, the 311 system, the, 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 uh, the computer back end of that is already working to help assign things. There's additional work that needs to be done, and we will believe that we could spend uh, some additional one-time money uh, to bring forestry onto the uh, work uh, assignment system uh, that is behind the 311 system called CityWorks, which already our Public Works Department and our Utility Department uses. So again, through these efficiencies, we believe um, you know, the position could be eliminated. Is there going to be an impact in the department if the position is eliminated? Absolutely. Will there have to be readjustments? Absolutely. Will work have to be reallocated? Absolutely. Will some things potentially in facilities uh, take a little longer because uh, the, the position in facilities would be doing some of this? Absolutely. But again, in trying to balance your budget without raising revenue, um, this is an efficiency that we think we can do. Again, we've looked at lots of other positions and we rejected them because we felt that the efficiencies couldn't be made. This is one position, despite the long list of good work that this individual does, and this position performs for the Parks and Recreation Department, it is one that we think uh, we can make work without the position being there. Thank you. Alderman Tendum. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I agree. I think this is we're on. This has been a great discussion. We're on the right path here. Uh, I certainly do, I, as well as far as I have thought it through, uh, support the 25 cent increase in the parking meter downtown. Uh, but at the same time, I I, I think this isn't. Um, we're not looking at this globally. I think, as uh, Alderman Burris said, and I would. Th I think the consequences of having to retract something that we do today by vote would be a hideous thing, um, with, if, particularly with regard to personnel. So I, I think we can keep this as a very strong um, idea and very strong direction that we have largely uh, have approved, but not take a vote on it quite yet. Alderman Holmes. Um, City Manager, could I have a little bit of an explanation similar to what Mr. Lyons gave for the parking supervisor in terms of the rationale for the same thing for the IT um, position? And my reasoning is because I'm, I'm trying to connect with the library because they talked a lot about, um, and the paper talks a lot about the connection with the library. So does that mean because the, we will no longer be, we, the city, be responsible for uh, these kind of services with the library, that is possible to eliminate that or? Uh, no, Madam, Madam Mayor, Alderman Holmes. Um, as was mentioned, there are three of these positions. Um, if, if you heard the employee mention that he does about 40% of the work done by three of the positions, well, that automatically indicates that perhaps two of those positions aren't uh, 
are, are doing all the work because if you divide uh, 100 by 3, you don't get 40 per. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at those three positions and say, uh, can we, again, be more efficient working with two versus three? Each of those three individuals have assignments that they carry forward day to day. And the employee who spoke to you before, one if part of his responsibilities is supporting uh, the library catalog system. We will still have two employees available. Uh, we may have to reallocate, again, some of the work that they do uh, in support, and we'll have to allocate some of their time uh, to the library of uh, support. But again, when you have three and you go down to two, uh, you, try to about, you, you try to reorganize. Um, also, uh, I've talked to Mr. Lyons and uh, Mr. Sloan, our IT manager, who has announced his retirement and will be leaving uh, at the uh, uh, probably the end of the first quarter, uh, March, April of, of next year. Uh, that we still have issues of, of managing our IT operations and making the most of all of our employees. And I think when you re have a reduction in service, there's an opportunity to look for additional efficiencies with the remaining staff. And, and it's my belief that by going from three to two, uh, we can live through that. Mr. Sloan will be leaving. We'll be looking to uh, replace him with a, an IT manager. Uh, we hope at a, a different grade uh, and, and salary level, and there will be monies freed up. Uh, one of the challenges I think we have with uh, our, you know, our IT staff is that we are transitioning from a model of, uh, of employees with one set of skills to a model of employees perhaps with different sets of skills, and I also think there are opportunities for contracting. Uh, in, in IT here as well. Uh, the position, uh, the IT position fully loaded is $106,000. So uh, that is a lot of money compared to the savings for four forestry positions is $140,000 um, with, uh, with the balancing from the contract. So um, again, I believe we can manage through uh, the reduction of the position. Um, certainly the employee is, is a, was a productive, active employee. And again, this is, as Alderman Rainey said, this is not about people, this is about positions. And there are two additional positions that remain in the department uh, that will be asked to uh, take on some additional assignments. And we think the capacity is there to do that. Thank you. Alderman Rainey? Actually, I said services, not positions. Um, I want to read out loud uh, for the record uh, staff's assessment of the Secretary 2 position. I'm, I'm not picking this out at, over the forestry workers because there's the same kind of comments, but this is very succinct. Even, and it goes exactly in argument to what the city manager has said. Even with the proposed increased use of technology, there are many work tasks that cannot be done other than by having a person physically in the office on a full-time basis. The remaining staff of the division, which we've been told there's a remaining staff, is either field staff and supervisors or managers, and none are in the office on a regular basis enough to perform all these tasks. Therefore, much of the work currently being performed by the Secretary 2 position listed above would likely be seriously delayed if the position were eliminated. Department staff believes that this position is critical to the overall operation of the Parks and Forestry Division and the customer service currently provided could be expected to decline to an unacceptable level. You know, I don't think anybody's ever said that, anything about the importance of a job I've ever done to this extent. I mean, this, this seems like a, a significant position performing a significant task, uh, providing services to the rank and file community member. And so, you know, I, I just wanted you to hear that because it does fly in the face of what the manager has said. Secondly, you know, if it comes to pass at the end of the day as we go through this budget, that some emergency issues come up and we have to move funds from one place to another, it will not be the most horrible thing in the world to say, whoops, we can only save two forestry workers, not four forestry workers, or, or something along those lines. Right now, these people feel that they're going to be eliminated. There is reason to keep their positions in this budget at this time, I believe, given the fact that we do have another source of revenue. 
I'm not saying that in the final analysis something more important won't come up. I, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be a parking enforcement officer or something else. But these positions that we've listed perform critical jobs in this community. And I, I don't think we can afford to eliminate them. And so with the, with the additional revenue that is totally new revenue and will be ongoing, and, and to uh, some extent, it's not, it, you know, it's not a tax. It's a user fee. Come on, you park at a meter, you need to feed the meter. And I, I just don't see that that is um, a malevolent uh, charge, parking meters. Thank you. Alderman Grover? We ask a lot of our employees, and we ask them to be efficient and effective in what they do. Um, and eliminating positions will require those who remain in the divisions and the departments to become even more efficient and effective in what they do. Um, I will support increasing the meter rates, uh, but I don't want to do it tied to this decision on, on how many positions now are in this motion. Uh, just the four positions are still in the motion. I thought we had added. No, I did five. I have five. Five or six positions in the motion. So I can't support the motion only because my reasoning on the forestry workers is different from my reasoning on the secretary position and the uh, parking supervisor. Um, so for that reason, I would not support the motion. I'd like it to come up perhaps separately instead of uh, all these positions in one motion so that we could have those discussions. Seven. Seven positions, Seven positions. Seven. in the, the motion. The four forestry workers, the secretary to the parking systems right. position, and the IT position for a grand total of $380,800. Because I, I do believe that this, not all of these positions, I think, need to be put back into the budget uh, because of those those uh, the really good case that can be made for making the divisions more efficient and more effective. Uh, thank you, Alderman Fisk. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, I, I certainly can support the four forestry workers and the and the secretary that w was Alderman Rainey's initial motion. I just don't feel I've got enough information about the IT position and the. Um, the parking uh, position to make a decision on that right now. And also, even if it's not directly tied to this particular motion, if in anyone's mind the uh, raising the parking meter fees is indirectly um, attached to this, it's not something that I could support at all. I, I think we, um, we need to look at our parking rates uh, so they're, it's not just downtown that's affected, but it would be the entire city that would be affected by a parking rate increase. But I think we need to also um, consider, and I did ask, I think, at the last meeting, um, what would be the implication, um, revenue enhancement, of increasing the parking meter um, time period across the city uh, to the hours that are in effect downtown, so going to 9 p.m. Uh, across the city. Um, and I also want our Economic Development Department to weigh in on the um, possible implications of raising uh, the meter rates to a dollar an hour downtown. Um, my own personal feeling based on consumer feedback is that raising them to 75 cents an hour was a big, a big hit for uh, people who are shopping downtown. Uh, paying 25 cents to park for 15 minutes uh, you have people coming into stores saying, oh my gosh, I've got a, well, right now it's 20 minutes, but going into stores and saying, I can only shop for 15 minutes because I only have a quarter running in and running out. That's not what we want to do. That's not the, that's not the uh, consumer climate that we want to create in any of our shopping areas throughout the city. We want people to come in and feel perfectly comfortable in staying as long as they possibly can uh, to spend as many, um, uh, dollars in our stores as possible and ra raise as much sales tax as possible. So, uh, again, I would like to move that as far away from this discussion as we can. Uh, I'm prepared to vote um, in favor of the motion on the four forestry workers and the secretary. Uh, I do not feel I've got enough information to do the other two employees right now. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Well, um, I don't see that supporting supporting my motion um, you have to then support a motion to raise parking. That's a whole other discussion. 
I am just presenting that as my source of revenue for this, and I am not only going to support it, but I will, you know, um, do everything I can to lobby for it. So, but you know, each vote is a separate vote, and you can think of other ways to get the money. I mean, I just heard back yeah, from that that is my. I was challenged on not having a, a balance, and that's my balance. And. and I mean, I thought the staff memo on that matter was um, excellent, and I support it wholeheartedly. So anyway, um, I am wondering if Alderman, uh, would you be willing to separate the motion to have um, two motions, one, Madam Mayor? Sorry, just going on here. Why don't you work my way out of this parliamentary nightmare, and we'll decide whether we're voting on Alderman Holmes's amendment to your motion or whether we're voting oh, on your motion. An amendment? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I thought. Oh, okay. I thought we were just changing the whole motion. And I would, oh, okay. Okay. I, I beg your pardon. Okay. So why don't we vote on the amendment, Alderman Rainey, and then we could okay. vote on your motion. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yes. And uh, that would work. And there are no further lights. So. Um, Alderman Holmes, would you restate your amendment? <laughs> and it, yeah, better you than me. I think, if I'm not mistaken, to include the um, forestry workers, and I'm thinking it was only three because one was vacant, and you said not the vacant. No, it's four. We're occupied and one vacant. Okay, and um, the secretary added to that would be the parking supervisor, I believe the title is, and the IT specialist one. No, I lost my page, so I don't have it. Um, that sounds yeah, correct. Yes, yeah, specialist one to um, be put back into the budget. All right, but it does not include the parking fees. Well, that yeah, but you said we needed to separate that. No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Separate okay, that we're fine. Separate. We're fine. I did not mean to confuse the issue with that question. All right. Um, I'll thank you. Um, every uh, well, this is money, so city clerk, you better call the roll um, in favor of, for everyone in favor of Alderman Holmes's. Amendment. Amendment. Alderman Wilson. And only because I think it's premature, I'm voting no. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Alderman Tendum. No. Alderman Grover. No. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Burris. No. Alderman uh, Fisk. No. Alderman Braithwaite. Yes. Alderman Wynn. It, <laughs> you five nays, three yeses. The motion fails. Um, Alderman Rainey, uh, your motion is simply to keep the four forestry and the, and the, secretary. And the secretary. secretary. All right. So, uh, City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Wilson. Again, because I think it's premature, I'm voting no. Alderman Holmes? No. Alderman Tendum? No, because I too think it's premature. Alderman Grover? No. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Alderman Burris? No, once again, because I think it's too early to vote on it. Alderman Fisk? Aye. Alderman Braithwaite? Uh, no, because I'd like more information. Six no's, two yeses. Oh, yeah. The motion fails. I'm not. Wait, who has a brilliant idea? I'm waiting. Well, I would like to say that I also would like the revenue enhancement of the $120,000 that we could get from transferring the cost of ticket collection agency fees to the violators. Okay. Um, Alderman Burris. Um, on page 17, uh, there's a notation under the library, um, the 238000 Could I just get more information on that? 
Or yeah. if somebody knows, could they tell us? Yeah, that's what I mean, right now. Like. Madam uh, Mayor Alderman Burris, uh, the issue of the Evans sorry. The issue of the Evanston Public Library is not one that the council spoke of in recent months, and perhaps this is an opportunity to give the council an update and to and to uh, get a sense of uh, where you'd like to go. Because I think that's that background is important to to get to the answer that you're looking for. Is that acceptable, Alderman Burris? Right. Yeah, I, I just didn't have any information. Okay. I in our packet there was a mem, but it didn't really address this. So I just want to know. Uh, as the council recalls, with the adoption of the fiscal year 2011 budget, the council allocated a dollar amount uh, to the library board and uh, directed the library board to make whatever adjustments they felt were appropriate uh, for the uh, Evanston Public Library to live within that dollar amount. Uh, the library board uh, did that, um, and they have been moving forward. Uh, also at the council uh, uh, budget deliberations for fiscal 11 uh, the council uh, gave the general sense that there was agreement uh, to move forward with the library fund model uh, for the operation of the Evanston Public Library uh, with the with that direction staff had worked with the uh, uh, library staff and the library board over the past many months uh, looking as to what uh, form that would take uh, we had worked on a memorandum of understanding between the library and the city about costs and and other matters, and quite honestly, those were very difficult discussions uh, uh, with the library board. Um, then uh, a few months back, Mary Johns, the library director, left, um, and that kind of stopped everything and really put a whole different uh, view on uh, where we were heading with the library. Uh, I met with the library board and uh, indicated to them that uh, you know I felt it was remained important to move forward with the library fund model. Uh, there's also issues of governance. Uh, currently, the library director reports to the city manager. The library is a city manager department. Uh, with Ms. Johns's departure, I, I think this may be the time uh, to make the change uh, to a more conventional form of municipal library uh, funding and governance under the Illinois uh, Library Act. So the library board has moved forward. Uh, they have adopted a budget. Uh, that budget uh, is in excess of the, uh, uh, the value of uh, their current budget. Uh, so there would be additional dollars required in order to do that. So there's an adjustment here in this budget reflecting that. Uh, also, uh, in discussions with the city staff and library staff, uh, we felt it was appropriate for the North Branch Library to have rent paid uh, back to the city. And so we have made an adjustment uh, to the budget uh, that reflects rent uh, for the North Branch Library. Those numbers combined together come up with that 200, uh, 230, Mr. Lyons, $230,000 adjustment. Uh, so that is, that is the change, and that would be money above and beyond uh, what the library board uh, currently has. Uh, there are larger issues here associated with this that if the council is in agreement with moving forward with the library fund, uh, we would uh, then bring forward documents that the library board is prepared to pass uh, requesting a, a, a tax levy uh, specifically for the library. That tax levy would be equal to their budget, um, and so that would be another step toward uh, the library uh, being on its own under the Illinois Library Act by, by having a dedicated funding source to it. The, the last piece of this then comes back to governance of the library board. Uh, I'm working with the library board now to begin the recruitment for a new library director. Um, we are doing this uh, uh, together as a, a joint process. The library board selected a consultant to move forward with a recruitment uh, at their meeting this past week. Uh, but there then remains the governance question. Uh, my uh, suggestion and recommendation to the city council uh, for the budget process is to uh, evaluate the additional monies that the library board is requesting, evaluate the need uh, or not need for rent for the North Branch Library, uh, be comfortable with a dollar amount for the library, and then decide if you are prepared uh, to uh, have a separate uh, line on the tax bill uh, that would represent the, the value of the budget for the library uh, as part of the property tax, and then to leave the governance issues uh, regarding the library uh, for after the budget uh, for the first part of next year. A long answer to a short question, but I thought it was important to get all that information out there. Um, 
I have one question, city manager. So the 75000 is basically a wash because we charge it to them and then they pay it to us. That is correct. However, in, in discussions with many of you, um, there has been a feeling if we're going down this library fund model route that there should be an accurate depiction of the cost of the operation of the library uh, to the residents of Evanston. That's absolutely correct. Alderman Wilson? Just a different topic again. Um, in reviewing the, the uh, parks and recreation proposals, uh, we're talking about substantially increasing some of these fees as well. And I looked at the memoranda that was prepared uh, by the staff. And for example, a household of four, say two adults, two kids, the income level for 50% assistance there is $41,000. And we're talking about increasing the aquatics camp fees from 400 to $450. And, and, and those kind of things are significant increases, particularly in view of the fact that the projected cost for aquatics is I think $99,000 or $97,000 and the projected uh, revenue is $212,000. So we're actually doing pretty well in aquatics. Um, I looked at the ice rink as well since I have a member of my household who spends a lot of time there. But what looks like a fairly innocuous uh, 7 to $9 increase when you take that over the course of a year of a uh, young woman or young man who is spending uh, the number of hours that they spend training there, you're talking about an increase of 500 to 1,000 or more dollars a year for that uh, individual to participate in that uh, ongoing uh, program for their ice time. So these numbers are numbers that I think we're going to have to look at more closely as well. I'm not uh, suggesting we do that right now, but uh, they appear innocuous, but they're not innocuous to the people who need these things. And, um, you know, again, going back to the 25 cent meter increase, um, you know, money like that, to me, was looking at uh, some of this kind of thing as well. Um, you can only push people so far. So I want to make sure we take a close look at these things as well. On the other hand, there are other, are other items with, that uh, uh, cost a lot and bring in very little. So we might want to reevaluate uh, uh, how we're allocating uh, charges and costs for some of those as well. Thank you. Alderman Rainey? Well, I... I can't help but um, evaluate what you just said, Alderman Wilson, and think that you're talking about reducing revenue, but you're, you're not talking about a way to then, again, reduce expenditures. So that's, that's interesting. It's um, interesting. The 25 cent was my idea last time, so I no, like no, how you I'm grabbed talking, onto that I'm for your idea. I'm talking about reducing fees. I'm, I'm just thinking about private lessons, how expensive that is compared to ours. Um, but I want to get back to the library, because that's what I thought we were talking about. Um, I think given, and I don't know if there's a limitation on, um, on, um, on uh, referendum, but I think the time has come just to either fish or cut bait, and I think we need to discuss making the library a special district. They have absolutely all the authority at this point, but there's there's no accountability. They're, they're not elected. There are people you appoint, or when the next mayor comes, they'll appoint them, or some are from the last mayoral appointment. And there's just no accountability there. And there doesn't have to be. They can, they can spend up to their limit and um, run the library any way they want. I, I really think we need to either take them back into the fold or make them a special district, make them get elected, make them stand up and defend their decisions, or make us defend our positions. We can, put that, we can put that question on the ballot. We know we have until January 2nd or 3rd to do it. I think we should do it. This, we're just pussyfooting around on the library issue. Uh, thank you. Alderman Burris? I, I agree 100% on that with the, the library situation. Okay, um, okay. They need to be responsible. So have, if they want to raise taxes and they want to manage the budget independently, then let them go out and run for office and be accountable to residents and taxpayers. Um, but as far as the current budget, 
for the library expenses, um, they're creating a new position, um, and they're asking for 235000 not just for that position, but for other things. I guess my, my issue is um, we're trying to find ways to keep the, the people that we have on staff and not um, have people lose their jobs. I think that we're all trying to do that. I don't understand how in good conscience the library board can come to us and ask for another $240,000 and a new position when they understand the financial stress that we are under and that we're by doing that they are putting people out of work that seems to be wrong um, I would like to know exactly where that extra 230 I mean they gave us a budget but it's all mixed together what is that 238,000 what is that new position um, how much will that new position cost to do that and maybe if they want to add new positions and add extra money once they become their own taxing jurisdiction and they ha they can uh, have be accountable to residents and taxpayers then they can spend it how they choose um, thank you alderman tendum and i would like to remind you we said we finish at noon thank you madam mayor uh, is it is it my understanding that the 25 percent increase on parking would be applicable to all meters in the yes. city yes. so so in the area downtown outside of downtown we would be increasing that'd be a hundred percent increase per hour we'd going be going from 25 cents an hour or from um, 25 cents for uh, half. half an hour to um, 50 cents for half an hour and what it, 75 cents so it would be comparable to the city former city downtown <laughs> I guess I guess I'm a little confused as to the breakdown of hours versus. Um, I thought it was 25 cents for half hour. For the meter. For 30 minutes. Yeah. Alderman yeah. Alderman Tendum, Alderman Tendum, members of the council, there are multiple uh, rates uh, separate from the downtown. Uh, my understanding from the discussion this morning is that you're looking for a dollar an hour citywide. Um, so we can come back and with a budget memo that explains where it's not uh, currently 75 cents an hour and then uh, talk about impacts for those other places that it's not 70, currently 75 cents an hour. I believe that's important. I mean, it is it's quite a steep jump for areas outside of downtown. Okay. And a lot of it there is there are no alternative free parking areas like our garages uh, downtown. You can have for your next meeting a detailed breakdown of that. Alderman Rainey. Um, that, that's not what the staff memo is. Um, it says here that the city parking meters currently charge 75 cents per hour in the downtown area and 50 cents per hour in other locations. Um, staff projects the city will um, collect 2,600,000 in revenue. By increasing the fee for all parking meters by 25 cents per hour, okay, that's um, that will generate $650,000 in additional revenue. So I'll, I'll not bringing everybody up to a dollar an hour. It's raising <coughs> 25 cents. It's still a significant larger percentage. Well, yeah. yeah, but it's 25 cents. It's, only 25 it's 25 so cents. Paying 25 cents now. It's not raising everybody to a dollar. I no, I, I understand okay. that, but it is, it's all relative to the current price. No, well, it's page 21 of the memos. Fabulous increase. Alderman Grover. Uh, along with that information, um, let us know, please, the last time parking meter rates were changed. And by how much? All right, um, Alderman Wilson. Last question, I guess, um, to supplement my prior request on the economic development funding, could we get a list of who received funding for the past, say, four years? Is that reasonable? Sure. Go back. Okay. Alderman Fisk. I'm sorry, Marty, did you want to? Clarification. So when you're saying funding, these are for, for instance, the business district grants, or what are you specifically refer referring to? Just grants. Right. Thank you. From the Economic Development Fund. From Economic Development Fund, right. 
like um, facade, facade improvement for CDBG, not, not counting that. Okay. No, no, Any, not that, not facade, right. Anything from the fund? Anything from the economic development fund? Right. Okay. Alderman Fisk? Yeah, just some uh, uh, housekeeping things. Um, my reference was um, uh, for a memo if parking meter rates were um, consistent throughout the city at a dollar per hour, what would that generate? Okay. Um, on the library? We're charging, I'm assuming our lease rates are going to be market lease rates. Is that correct? It on, is what on, we are collecting for the other side of the property we own. So the flower shop, what we did is we took the square footage and we came up with a, a rate uh, based on what we're charging for the flower shop. Okay. Has uh, there been any discussion on selling the building to the library? There has not. What, what's the value of the building? Could I just... I don't know that you can we, give have, us an update we have on a that. value. And, and right now, again, from a governance perspective, us is them. Uh, the library is still a part of the, so there's no one to sell it to. Currently. Yeah, and I, and I would support Alderman Rainey on a referendum. Alderman Rainey? Um, Madam Mayor, um, could you please tell us so that I know and others know, when will be the time when it will be appropriate to make motions regarding expenditures and revenues, either cutting expenditures, adding them, well, revenue yeah. enhancements, or detractions? Well, I thought we did one this already today. Well, I, I think the argument of all the members who, I mean, there were only two votes for one of those. I, I and didn't. The argument was, the explanation from the aldermen was, and the majority of aldermen, is that it's too soon. So I want to know when can we do this? When do you feel it will be appropriate for us to make decisions regarding the city of Evanston's 2012 budget? Okay. Um, I think the, your fellow aldermen have to answer that, but... Uh... Okay, could, we get, could I get some counsel on this? Alderman Tendum? I, I think one uh, date I would like to uh, shoot for would be sometime after the next citizen comment, um, public, public hearing. When will that be? I don't know. 14th. The 14th of November? Yes. November 14th. Alderman Grover? Uh, I guess my question was, could you remind us about the meetings that we have scheduled to discuss the budget and, uh, namely, which opportunities we'll have to discuss it and make these decisions? Do we have? Madam Mayor, Alderman Grover, uh, according to your budget calendar, there is time, it will be time allotted on the 14th. There is other items on the Council's agenda that evening, but there will be time allotted on the 14th, and then you have a special meeting scheduled for Wednesday, November the 16th. And that is what the calendar is currently scheduled. Uh, and our hope was that the council would adopt, uh, con con conclude deliberations and adopt on Monday, November 28th. So the answer is we don't have an enormous amount of time left. Is, is the 28th the regular council meeting? Yes. Oh. Go ahead with 14. 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh. If the council wishes to schedule additional times, please let us know. We'll work on scheduling additional meetings. It would be my request that people come with the information that they feel they need to the next budget meeting. Or let us know off, as, as Alderman Grover sent a detailed email this morning, we'd be happy to take questions at any time. Could maybe we start earlier on the 16th and, and to give us more time so that we could get more, if we start at 6 instead of 7? If that's the council's desire. I don't know. I'm just asking. No, and that, the staff's ready. Yeah, let's do it. Alderman Wilson, you okay with that? Could we, All right. could Alderman Fiss and Alderman Brethway could chime in. <laughs> the question was to start the meeting on November 16th, the special meeting earlier than 7, started at 6. Alderman Rainey? Well, uh, uh, frequently when, when issues were mentioned, people said today that um, they, they felt that they were supportive, but they didn't have enough information or it was too early. So I'm just hoping whatever information that is can be obtained by people who didn't have it today. I, that, that, I, because we could keep 
we could not have enough information till the the 28th or whatever that last day is so you know what I'm saying I mean that that is a reason why people didn't vote on something one way or another so if we could just make sure people got information I think the city manager has indicated that staff will provide any information um, that's requested. Right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Are we meeting at 6 or 7 on 16th? I'm I believe sorry. there's consensus for 6, so we'll make sure that the clerk's office... Okay, great. Does, Wayne's here, so she'll know. <laughs> does anyone have a problem with 6 o'clock? Okay. Wednesday, the 16th of November. I can't. Just make all the decisions before you get there again. <laughs> Start with. All right. Um, it's been moved. Is there a second to adjourn? Thank you. All in favor, say aye.